What's going on, Papa Fam? Welcome to the stream. Uber. Highly, highly demanded Uber. We're finally taking the dive. We're doing React Native with Uber. Let me know in the comments if you're excited right now. We're about to blow this place up. We almost have 500 likes and I haven't even started yet. That is crazy. Papa fam, I have so much coming for you guys. I'm so excited. We are going to crush it. I hope you guys are ready for this. Let's go ahead and see what we're building today, guys. Uber 2.0 with React Native. iOS, Android development, Tailwind, Redux, all that amazing stuff right now. Get hyped. Tell me where you're watching from right now. 450 likes, almost at 500. Let's go, Papa fam. Check this out. Uber. Watch this, guys. We have Google Places auto complete. Go ahead and hit some London. Let's go ahead and get a ride. Nice. Let's go ahead and go to. Hmm, where should we go, guys? Where should we go? Let me know where we should go right now. It's a fully interactive map, by the way. Let's go to. Let's go to Essex. Essex. Boom complete navigation from a to b clickable points map resizes does everything it needs to do by itself we've got google distance matrix api calculating the distance for us absolutely crazy stuff guys crazy stuff look at this calculates a price for us for each different one we can even click on each one crazy it tells us the actual travel time 55 minutes to get from a to b now, I don't know about you guys, but that is sick. I see everyone come, dropping in where they're watching from right now. We got Manchester. We got, let's have a look. Basingstoke, Milton Keynes. Oh, Milton Keynes in the house. What's up, guys? Romania in the house. Nice. Luke says that's clean as hell. Guys, check it out. And not only did I do that, look at this. It completely, you can actually swipe back. All right. And then if we click this button over here, boom, back to the top. Start the whole process again. Let's go ahead and do... Let's check it out, guys. Let's do London. I will do from London Eye. Let's go from London Eye. There you go, London Eye. Let's go to, I didn't know you could do this, but let's go ahead and let's do it to Germany, right? Let's actually drive all the way to Germany. Boom! <laughs> it's gonna cost a lot, but you can go to Germany. That is sick. Smash the thumbs up button if you're excited for that, because I'm so pumped. I set a huge task this time, and I went ahead and built this out and you guys completely you know you can mess around with the map completely responsive even has things like if i go ahead and open the keyboard pushes the entire screen up so sick so so sick getting hyped for this guys we've got so much to look forward to i'm going to break down this build in front of us right now so you guys can see what we're going to be doing in today's video okay so let's break down this build what's actually happening here right let me go ahead and say, right, Uber clone. You might not be able to see that, but anyway, it's cool. Uber clone, right? So in this build, we're using React Native. React Native, nice. And bear in mind, I get loads of questions. If you know React, you're gonna be good for this one. Don't worry, take the plunge, okay? So we're gonna be doing, you know, tons of React, cool React stuff today, but I'm also gonna introduce you to React Native so you can build your own iOS and Android apps. So much fun, it's gonna be hyped, right? We're gonna use tons of Google APIs today. So I'm not only gonna be using one API, I'm gonna be using the Directions API, the Places API, even the district distance matrix API, which actually allows us to calculate travel times, all that crazy stuff, right? So we're going to be doing loads today, right? And also I updated the playlist. So if you want to go ahead and check it out, you know, sign up to the newsletter down below. And guys, before I carry on, I just want to let you guys know, right? We have a huge, I'm not just stopping here with Uber, right? We have an absolutely massive challenge coming up. I'm not even finished. Look, like Airbnb next week starting tuesday go ahead sign up first link in the description right now a five-day challenge starting next tuesday so i didn't just stop with uber i'm gonna go ahead and literally crush it with airbnb as well and this is a build that i've never done before we've got next.js tailwind versal i'm actually teaching you how to use Mapbox with normal react crazy stuff go ahead and sign up before all the spots get taken and guys i've actually gone ahead and created an actual book 
Ah, uh, yes, an actual book for you all to go ahead and get. So sign up for that challenge. You'll get a free book worth 50 quid. It's going to be sick. There's tons of prizes available. First link in the description, guys, you know what to do. And again, as always, if this is too hard for you, second link in the description is to go ahead and get free access to my Skillshare 101 Basics React class. So, you know, loads of you have been taking advantage of that. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. Keep enjoying the free value I'm giving you. And uh, as always, you know, that's it. Keep supporting the Papa fam. Without this, it wouldn't be possible. Let's carry on breaking this down. Uber clone, React, React Native. We're also going to be using Tailwind CSS. Now, a lot of you are wondering, how the hell is he using Tailwind CSS in React Native? So I'm going to show you how to do that today. And most jobs nowadays require something called Redux. So we're going to be doing Redux as part of this React Native app. We're also going to be using a, a really cool sort of kind of like how we implemented you know material ui back in the day we're actually going to be using react native elements all right so hopefully you guys enjoy that part of it so we've got react native elements actually kicking off as well today we just hit over 500 concurrent viewers that's sick that is actually sick all right wow <laughs> this is crazy guys react native elements as well we're gonna have um tons more included in this build so there's actually react navigation so that's pretty much React Navigation is how we go, you know, back and forward between all these different screens, right? We have so much to look forward to, right? All the hooks, all the practice, every single thing that you need to go ahead and get working, you're going to learn how to do. We actually got React Native maps as well. So this is iOS and Android maps. You're going to learn how to incorporate this right here today. So there's tons of stuff. I've never done this before in a build. I wanted to push the boundaries. I wanted to keep on getting more and more higher in, in what we do, but keep it available so that you beginners out there can still keep along with what I'm doing. Almost knocked over my water, damn. Get your water ready, get your coffee ready. Let's jump into the build. If you're hyped, guys, let me know. I can see the comments going crazy right now. And everyone's asking, oh, what are we going to do with? What are we going to do with Expo? What are we going to do with React Native? We're using Expo today. The reason why I'm using Expo is because one, you should be using it because it's sick, right? And also two, if you have an iPhone or if you have a Android, you can literally use this as your test device to go ahead and develop to. So remember, today we're building an app which is going to work on your phone. I have a lot of power right there, all right? So we've got loads of people getting ready for this. Let's go ahead and jump in, guys. Awesome, awesome stuff. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna shout a few of you out. We've got Guerrero, Gerard, he goes, I'm happiest to see you back. Amazing stuff, Arjun Joshi in the house. Aldo's back, what's up, man? We've got Luke in the house. We've got Shops Rise, what's up, man? We've got Samira, Code Uni, Ibrahim, Mohib, Pranav, Johnson. That's it, guys, I love you guys. I appreciate all of you, 600 likes sickest way to ever start a live stream i'm gonna go ahead and jump into this right now okay let's go ahead and kill it guys so excited for today's build right let's go ahead and get ready for this right so first thing you want to do is sign up to that challenge right first thing first link in the description sign up to that challenge and comment right now if you are signed up just say to me no i'm signed up and i just saw christian vargas actually took offer took the Skillshare offer right now. So again, like I mentioned before, second link in the description to grab that. It's gonna be sick, all right? I've got so much stuff coming for you guys. I've got free books, eBooks, all sorts of crazy stuff. 600 likes, boom. All right, whoa, we got Oscar, Worthy, Sidi. And guys, and I, you know what? I just have to tell you before we start. I even have a 12 hour Next.js tutorial coming. We actually have all the Netflix, Amazon builds, everything being compiled into each videos of their own. So everything is gonna be available for completely free for you guys to go ahead and crush it and become a developer and kill it in your life, okay? So next Tuesday is a place to be. Let's go ahead and jump into today's build. Let's do this, Papa fam. First thing we wanna do is set up the development environment. Okay, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Expo, right? So React Native is essentially a kind of, it's a very handy kind of library, let's call it. And it's essentially we're going to use React, so the React that we all know and love. So again, if you don't know React, HTML, CSS, JavaScript should be your fundamentals. And then you just go ahead and then like circle it around or layer it up with React to build really cool web apps. Once you know, you know, kind of a basis of React, you can move over to React Native fairly easy like you're going to see today, okay? So it's going to be a hell of a lot of a nice transition for a lot of you because I know a lot of you haven't actually done this before. So I'm hoping to go ahead and, um, you know, help you guys out today. So we're going to set up the development environment. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure you go to React Native and on the left side, you should see environment setup. Click setting up the development environment. 
down here, you want to go ahead and do npm install dash g export CLI in your terminal. Now you're most likely going to have to do sudo npm install dash g. I've already done this step, so I'm going to skip this. What this does, guys, is it goes ahead and actually can, um, sets this up so it installs the expo CLI globally to your machine. That means you can start using the expo commands in your terminal, right? And we're going to need that because here we start using it. Okay. Now, just a hint: when you do this, do sudo. But also after it's installed, close and reopen your terminal because sometimes it just takes a little bit of a kickstart to go ahead and get started, okay? So, one. Oh, yeah. nice I'm guys. Star, just we just got a nice donation. I can't actually see where, oh, we've got Vishal. Thank you so much, dude, appreciate you. Nice, this is sick. Right, let's go ahead and let's keep moving. This is awesome, guys. And I've actually got, a, I'm, I'm slowly upgrading this up. So we're going to get smoother and smoother every time. So the first thing we want to do is expo init awesome project. So I'm going to open up a terminal. You guys can feel free to code along with me today. Let's carry on guys. We're going to open up this terminal. And once this loads up, we're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go into my, I've actually got a nice documents builds for it. I like to keep my stuff neat, right? You don't have to, I like to. I think you should always have it available at hand. Always helps out. Right. So with that said, <laughs> my life is going to completely change with this. That's awesome. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and type in expo init. Right. And we're going to give a name for the app. So you can see it says expo init awesome project here. So I'm going to say expo init and we're going to say Uber clone and I'm going to say YT for YouTube. I'm going to hit enter. Right. Now what this will do is it will go ahead and initialize an expo app into our, uh, onto our computer. So I actually need to upgrade my expo CLI. So it's okay. You know, you can run that command. It's easy to do, but you're going to get this option, manage workflow or bare workflow. Now I am going to be introducing TypeScript on the channel, not today, but I will be introducing TypeScript on the channel. But here, what we want to do is if you can go ahead and hit the blank, right? So blank is where we want to start with, and that's going to have a managed blank workflow, which means it's going to be in the expo ecosystem. Expo is really good for many reasons. It allows you to easily test, you know, on your phone, on Android. Before, if you had, you know, uh, if you wanted to develop for iOS, you couldn't actually do it easily unless you had a Mac. Um, in fact, you couldn't do it. You needed to have Xcode. So now with Expo, you can actually do this. Provided you have an iPhone, you can just scan a QR code, loads up on your phone. And again, another really nice thing about Expo is when you're installing dependencies, makes it so much easier. So I see a lot of you saying, you know, React Native CLI. I've worked with React Native for a couple of years. Trust me, use Expo until you need to do React Native CLI stuff. Trust me, it works. And it works for a reason, okay? Nearly 700 likes. Wow. That's insane, guys. That is crazy. Thank you so much. All right, so we're installing the JavaScript dependencies right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a quick Google search because I'm going to show you guys how, you know, if you were doing this from the basics and the get go, imagine wanting to go ahead and introduce, let's just say the Redux toolkit into your application, right? So we're actually going to be using the Redux toolkit today and you can go ahead, click get started here. And this is where we would go ahead and, you know, look through some instructions. We would install the Redux toolkit into our app. And then it would show us, you know, how to go ahead and install this. Now I'm going to, if you want to read into it a bit more, you can another look one, here. Yeah. Oh, another donation. Ash Malviva. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate you. So yeah, this is, this makes Redux easy, right? Using the Redux toolkit. So I'm going to show you guys how to do all of that in extremely simple ways, right? So hopefully this doesn't take too long, but we're going to go ahead. And in the meantime, ah, oh, there we go. CD Uber clone. Your project is ready. Hurry. So now we're going to go ahead and go into our project. So CB, CD, oops, Uber clone YouTube. There we go. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go ahead and hit. So once we're in our project, I'm going to do code dot, and this will open up our code editor with that project folder sort of structure already intact. Okay. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to probably, uh, we could do, we leave that. That's all right. It's all good. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is pop this open like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kill the old app, right? I'm going to kill the old app right now because uh, we're going to start from scratch, right? So I'm stopping my old server. I'm going to close this, get my environment set up. And uh, NS says, hey, bro, you're the best from Kosovo. Nice, dude. That's awesome. 10 years old. Uh, we've got a viewer 10 years old. Oh my God. 700 likes. Boom. Let's go guys. Keep going. 800. I think we can do it. We've got 600 people watching right now. That is sick. 
That is huge. That's the biggest I've ever had. Thank you guys. So we're gonna go to app.js. This is the starting point for a React Native app, okay? You know, we're used to app.js. This is like a starting point for many apps. And you can see a few differences here. First thing, we've got view instead of divs. That's the first thing that you should get recognized with, right? You have a view instead of divs in a React Native. And this is because, think about it, when we're, when we're sort of, you know, coding up for React and all that stuff, it's a div, which is a HTML element on a page. Now we're coding for phones and, you know, iOS and Android, which means we have to take a slightly different approach. The really nice thing about React Native is we have these view components. When we use a view component, it goes ahead and when we build the app, that view component will get trans, like sort of, you know, sort of compiled, let's call it, into an iOS component. Oh, another one. Thank you so much, Ifosa. Appreciate you, dude. He goes, this is going to be sleek. Please consider rebuilding Netflix. And oh, I will do that, actually. All right. But when you have a view component, it will go ahead and compile down into an iOS app and also an Android app version. Okay. So as in, not an iOS component and a Android component that will resemble and act like a div. Let's think of it like that. Okay. So that's how you can in simple terms, put it. So how do we actually run this thing, right? Second thing you wanna notice before I mention that, it's not class names, it's style. So that's a quick switch. And also here we have styles.container and this is how we basically go ahead and write our CSS like styles. Okay, so these are JSX or style properties. So what I'm gonna do instead here, and we're gonna be using a mixture of Tailwind CSS and normal style sheet style properties here. So I'm gonna show you how to incorporate Tailwind because we love Tailwind, let's be real, it's so sick. All right, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and get into a coding vibe here. There we go, we've got our colors back. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do all this. So Command J, and let's go ahead and do, uh, oh, thank you so much. You're doing amazing work, Sunny, keep it up. Thank you, Hashit. We're going to do expo start. So this is how you actually kickstart your app. Okay. So I'm going to hit expo start and let's watch this kickstart the application. So what this will do is this will actually kickstart and open up localhost 1902. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and actually open this up on our browser right now. And let's go ahead and pop this over here. And it's opening up Chrome for me. Oh, damn it. I don't want Chrome. All right. I'm gonna close my Chrome because Chrome is gonna kill me today if we keep up with Chrome. So you can see it already. As soon as I open up Chrome, it already does damage. There we go. Chrome is out of here, especially when I'm live streaming. Hell no. Not letting Chrome through the door. All right. So local host, there we go. So now you can see we get this screen, a Metro Bundler. Now, what is a Metro Bundler and what the hell does it do? Right? A Metro Bundler is because remember we have that compile step where like those view components get compiled down into like the iOS component, the Android component. We need something called a bundler, right? The bundler runs by itself, it's very simple to do. We just do expo start and it handles the rest of it. But this is the screen that we now have access to, right? So the first thing you can do is grab your phone and scan that QR code, right? So obviously you can't scan mine because it's local right now, unless you went ahead and changed this to tunnel. But you can actually scan that with the Expo Go app. You can actually go ahead and run your local code environment on your phone, provided you're using the same Wi-Fi network. So that's sick. And I would highly recommend that all of you do that. OK, so definitely recommend that. And it's going to be it's going to be a lot of a lot of fun. OK, so let's go ahead and carry on. So we're here. We're going to click on run on iOS simulator. Now, if I'm using iOS simulator, Again, this is actually preference based. So we're not gonna do the web browser. We're gonna do either Android or iOS. Now, like I mentioned before, iOS is gonna require Xcode, right? So you need to download Xcode and you would literally have a iOS simulator available. Android requires Android Studio. But again, if you, if you find this so slow, I always get the comments, you know, it's so slow, I hate that. Or it's clunky or whatever. You can just use the QR code with a real device. Okay, so whatever works for you, you do that. But I'm gonna click run on iOS and you see it says attempting to open in a simulator. Now you do need to have your simulator open. So in this case, you see I've disconnected. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and go to my home screen here. Let's actually go ahead and restart my little phone. So how do I, oh damn it, I can't click it. All right, so what I'm actually gonna do here is you see it says opening on iPhone 12 Pro Max, right? So what I'm actually gonna do here is move my phone over to my coding screen. Drag this a little bit more, put this over there so I get a nice little neat setup. And can you see where we also ran it in the in the um, expo start in the terminal? You can see that it also comes up here. That QR code also pops up here. And we also have options here. So the way I would recommend 
to run everything from now on <coughs> is whenever you console log inside of a React Native app, it comes up in your terminal here as opposed to your browser, right? Whereas, you know, we're used to browser and React and all that stuff. So I'd recommend this. But what we're actually going to be doing here is if you type in I, so I'm going to hit I, it says opening on iOS. And if you ever need these commands, by the way, you can just hit question mark and it will open up as you need it to. Um, in fact, this is actually being a bit slow right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to force it to kind of restart itself. So if I do R, see it says reloading apps. And that'll kind of force it to kickstart. And it says new update available, building a JavaScript bundle. So you can see down here is actually sort of compiling the app. Now, the first time you build it, it will take a little bit of time. But after that, it will be a lot quicker, right? So this will take a little bit of a hit on your machine or computer when it's first doing the bundle process. After it's done, it's pretty relatively smooth and it's not so bad. OK, so we shouldn't have an issue once that's bundled up. And you can see even down here, we get a progress report. Everything works. Don't be afraid of React Native. That'll be my, you know, my main piece of advice. Don't be afraid of, you know, React Native and it's slowing my machine down and it's hard and it's not. You just need to break it down and we'll make it simple, okay? So there you go, running application, finished the building, blah, blah, blah. And it says, open up app.js to start working on your app. Hooray, we made it. Okay, this is our first starting point. So I'm gonna do Command J to hide my terminal, Command B to hide the sidebar. And this is where we start. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's build Uber. Right, hit save, and you see we have fast refresh. Fast refresh is actually in Next.js, so it's really nice, sort of you know, coding experience as we do it. Whoa, Frank, what's up with the $20 donation? He goes, Let's go, Sonny. This will be an awesome React Native build. Thank you so much, Frank, for tuning in. Appreciate you. $20 US, appreciate you, man. Always coming in clutch. That is that is hype me up. We just hit 800 likes as well. I can't believe it. 20 minutes in, we're already at 800 likes, already at 20, 20 quid on the chat donations. 600 people are watching this right now. You guys are sick. If you are watching and you haven't already, please smash that thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button because there's like 50% of you who aren't watching, who are watching right now who aren't subscribed. It helps the channel grow massively, helps me continue to do this full time. So hit the subscribe button and remember, subscribe, to that, um, subscribe and hit sign up to the challenge. It's going to be massive. Okay. It's going to be huge. And I'll keep bringing the value. I promise. All right. So let's carry on. So you can see instead of a H1, we now have the text and status bar is actually referring to this at the top. So right now we don't actually care about status bar. So I'm going to get rid of that. The reason why it's centered is we have this container and you can see it's got flex one background, uh, color align items, justify content. Now quick rule of thumb, right? When you are doing work with react native, Typically, we are used to having Flexbox default to a row. Very important point here. When you are using React Native, Flexbox defaults to a column. Because think about it, you're on a phone. It doesn't make sense to always have it in a row, so Flexbox defaults to a column. Remember that, and I'll keep on saying it over and over again throughout the build, Flexbox defaults to a column. Everything about our app is using Flexbox and how it styles itself, you know, gets designed. So it uses a column-based approach, right? So that's how we do it. All right, let's do this, guys. Let's build some Uber. So the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and set up a Redux. Okay, so the first step is we're going to set up Redux. So let's actually step this out. So set up Redux. That's number one. Second step we'll do is we'll go ahead and set up something like, um, let's just do Redux and we'll just handle it at each, each at its own point, right? So the first thing I wanna do with Redux is actually go ahead and, you know, like I mentioned before, like I'm gonna show you completely transparently how you can go ahead and do it if you were starting this out. So you would type in something like Redux Toolkit, you know, you wanna go ahead and use the Redux Toolkit. It's a pretty good option for me. I would say it's the most simple way to use Redux in your app. And here you can see this is what you would typically be doing if you're using, you know, create React app. We're not doing that, we're just using an existing app. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do yarn, add Redux.js toolkit. Now, you might see that I'm using yarn. You can check what you're using based on your lock file. If you see package lock, then you're using NPM. If you're using yarn, it's yarn lock. It doesn't matter if you wanna switch, you can switch, just delete the other lock file first. I don't have two, right? Karthik says, I love how Sunny breaks stuff with comments. Thank you so much, you'd appreciate that. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and install this right now. So I'm going to hit the plus button to have a second terminal. So you see a second terminal, and we're going to wait for that to come in and load itself. Right, and then here I'm going to go ahead and say yarn add Redux JS toolkit. 
go ahead and hit enter on that, right? And this will go ahead and install Redux Toolkit into our application, right? So let's keep on moving, guys. Wow, oh my God, what? Harry Collins just dropped a 75 pound donation. What the hell, dude? Thank you so much, that's huge. That means we just hit a hundred pounds on chat revenue. I like 25 minutes. Uh, guys, I'm sorry if I keep interrupting, but that is crazy. 75 pound. Thank you so much, Harry Collins, man. I appreciate you, dude. And then Jeremias also dropped a lovely 75. I'm not sure that what, what currency, but that's huge as well, man. That's sick. Thank you so much, man. And yes, we will be using both in the future, but yeah, that's it. That's crazy. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. I'm going to keep bringing React Native, guys. You guys are loving it. All right, so we've got Let's Build Uber. All right, we, we just went ahead and installed um, React Native, right? So I'm sorry, Redux Toolkit. So the next step that we want to do is actually go ahead and actually set up something called a provider. All right, so this is our entire app. This is the high level kind of overview, the entry point of our app. What you actually want to do at this point is have something called a provider. Right, so a provider is basically a wrapper which injects our app or sort of levels our app up so that way we have Redux inside of it. So we import it from React Redux like so. Right, and actually, you know what? I might need to actually install this. I don't think I did. So we're actually going to have to do a, add this as well. So we're going to do yarn add and I'm actually going to go ahead and say React Redux as well. Okay, and then we can go ahead and install that as well. So yarn add React Redux. Wait for that to go ahead and load in. Today's all about patience, okay? It's all about patience. And in fact, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna quickly make a little tweak to my environment. One second, doosh, doosh, doosh. But yeah, all about patience today, guys. Do not, you know, freak out if things aren't making sense. Don't worry if it's kind of, you know, getting scary or anything like that. Just take your time and it will, everything will make sense as we continue with today's build, okay? Okay, let's keep going. All right. So once you've got that, we're gonna go ahead and import provider from React Redux. Now I just went ahead and restarted my uh, uh, VS Code. So I'm actually gonna have to do expo start again on my first terminal. And I will open up my second terminal on the side. Okay. Let's keep it going. And once we've got everything running, it will be smoothed right now. We just get a bit of hiccups while it, you know everything gets you know up and running. It takes a little bit of time in the initial get go. Otherwise it's all good. Oh God, it's gonna try and open Chrome again. All right, brace yourselves, guys. So Rahul, in the meantime, is Rahul says, is this for React Native uh, newbies? Yes, don't worry if you're absolutely new to React, this is gonna be awesome for you. Um, just go ahead and like I said, break it down. I'm gonna take my time with today's build so that way you guys you know, don't freak out and everything sort of makes sense for you. I'm gonna click open on iOS again and this should be good to go. All right, nice. So now we can breathe, we can relax a little bit. Um, my sort of something's taken up my CPU a little bit, but again, should be all right once we get started. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and we've already got the Redux.js toolkit. So the next step naturally is going to be to go ahead and wrap our entire app. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and wrap the app with a provider. Oops, provider. Like so. Okay. Now with this, we're going to go ahead and say, and also guys, I want to mention uh, all the code is actually going to be available in the Papa GitHub repo, which is in the description. So make sure you go ahead and check that one out. Okay. If you want all the access to today's, today's build. So you're going to grab the rest of your app and actually throw it up there like so. All right. So this is the first step. Now, this is not all you need to do for React. You need to do a little bit more. You can see here it says undefined is not an object. It's starting to freak out already, right? This is because when you use React, you need something called a store. Now, if you're sorry, when you use Redux, you need something called a store. Now, all Redux is, right, is it's essentially a data layer for your app. So imagine if I'm in any component inside my application and I want to share data amongst them, I introduce a data layer which surrounds my entire app and then I can go ahead and push data and in, push information into the data layer whenever I need and I can go ahead and pull data whenever I need as well. So that's going to help us out again. Um, we're going to be using that. That's Redux today. What is happening? David Blumen just says, looking forward to Tailwind, interested to see what library you use. Make sure you take that water break. 20 pound, don't, the guys, I'm speechless. I have no idea what is happening today, but thank you so much, dude. 
Wow. I'm going to have some sushi tonight. I'm going to call my and we're going to have some sushi. <laughs> That's insane, guys. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate that. That's huge. All right, and we just hit 900 likes. Wow, I'm just going to keep the fire coming, guys. Damn. So we need a store, right? And this is basically how we set up that global layer, that data layer, right? So let's do this. Oh my God, another one. What? Corey, $20 donation. Keep it up, brother. Thanks again. What is happening? This is crazy, guys. Thank you so much. Oh my God. I'm sorry if, you know, if you're watching this as a replay, you can feel free to skip this part. It's all good, but I'm just, I can't not shout you guys out. That's insane. I appreciate you so damn much. God damn. Thank you guys. Wow. That's insane. Right, so we're going to go ahead and create a store right now, okay? So the, to create a store, all you need to do is go ahead and do store.js. Right, and this is pretty much where our store or that data layer is going to live. Now, if you're wondering where the hell did he get this code from? Like I said, it's on the actual documentation for the website uh, for Redux and when you're looking through that stuff. So I'm just breaking it down to make it extremely simple for you today, okay? So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to copy in some of the configuration, right? So you can go ahead, pause it and actually copy this out. The first line is configure store. This is something we take from the Redux toolkit and it actually allows us to set up that data layer that I talked about. The second one is called a nav reducer. Now you're gonna notice it's inside of a folder and it's called the nav slice. Now remember I talked about the data layer, right? We can actually separate the data layer into different areas. Now we're gonna have one primary layer in today's build where we're gonna store information and that's gonna be called the navigation slice. As you can imagine, this is where the user is going to store their navigation information. What is the origin? Where is the destination? And how can how, and then we can basically pull that information wherever we need it inside of our app, right? Wherever component we're inside of, I can go ahead and pull it as necessary. So we're going to have something called the nav slice, which is at that area. And then what you do is you have something called a reducer. The reducer is basically just setting up the store, right? That that global layer, and you basically connect it to your navigation slice. So don't worry if that doesn't make sense. I will explain it and we'll go for it in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and create that navigation slice right now. Okay. So I'm going to go and create a folder called slices. Once again, it looks like I'm grabbing this out of thin air, but this is actually simply from the Redux documentation. So if you do want to go ahead and read it, I would recommend you read it as well. And it's going to help you out. All right. So I'm going to go to slices and I'm actually going to create a file inside called nav slice. And this is going to be responsible for everything that is inside of the navigation slice. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set that up. So inside of nav slice, we're going to go ahead and import something called create slice. Okay. Now there is a very nice example from the Redux uh, sort of website. So if we go to tutorials overview or quick start, I think it is, they've got a really nice sort of, you see, this is where I got the initial code base from. And the second one that we need, you see you pass in the store and do all that stuff. This is the one that you can pretty much copy. So it's called a counter slice, right? And you can go ahead and grab this if you want to, to get started. But I'm actually got this thing set up already. So I'm going to show you how we do it. Now, what we first need to do is define what the initial sort of state of the data layer should look like. So we're going to have three primary pieces of information. We're going to have something called the origin, which as you can imagine is point A. This is like, you know, where 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 are you no yeah where are you right now pretty much you know the first question you ask when you go on uber where are you right now oh i'm over in london and i want to go over to like let's just say i want to go to germany right with an uber so you can do that in this app <laughs> so you're gonna say i'm gonna do origin no and i'm gonna do destination no and these are the initial values that we're setting up when we do this okay so then we're gonna go ahead and say travel time information and what we're going to do eventually in travel time information is we're going to have information which is regarding the sort of you know the time that it takes to get to a from a to b and we're going to use apis to you know fill this information out and so forth so again take your time with this because it, you know it's one of those things that once we do the setup it will all work pretty smooth right so the first the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and create that slice right the way we create that slice is we simply go ahead and create the following. So you just need to go ahead and put this information on the screen. So export const nav slice equals create slice. And we get create slice from the toolkit, which makes our life so much easier. And this is an object inside of the parentheses, right? So we're executing this function and we're passing it an object. So we need to give the slice a name. So that data layer, you know, the slice that we have inside of it a name. So in this case, I'm just going to call it a nav. 
And the second thing we want to do is pass the initial state of the sort of data layer. So I'm going to just pop that in there. Third thing I need to do is called reducers. Now, when we push information into that data layer, we need a way of actually, you know, we call it dispatching an action into the data layer, right? And what we can do is we can have different kinds of actions. So the three actions that we're going to have in today's build is going to be set origin, set destination, and set tra travel time information. So first one, imagine, you know, you go ahead, you say I'm from London or where we're from London. It will dispatch this set origin action into that data layer. And then now it's part of the data layer, right? And then we can pull it whenever we need to. Same with set destination, same with, you know, set travel time information. So that's essentially what we're doing here. And this is all inside of something called a reducer. Okay, so this is actually reducer and then we're going to pop this open and then we basically, you know, we create those actions. So the first one, we call it set origin, right? And this gives you two things, right? So it gives you two arguments when you have set origin. So this is called an arrow function. And what we have is the state, which is the current state, right? So this is the initial state, but this is the current state, the current, what does that global, you know, a layer look like at this point in time? We actually get access to that through the state object. And we also get something called an action. Okay, and an action is basically when I make that dispatch from the component to the data layer. So when I basically say, okay, change this piece of information in the data layer, that's called an action. So we also get that available. So now I have the current state and I have that data. And then you can imagine you can just do, do something with it and change the data layer, right? So now we've got this state action. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. So let's say for the origin, when I get, for example, uh, an action come through, I want to change the state of the origin to the action and we we um, what you basically the information inside of the action is something known as the payload right and again do not worry if this doesn't make sense you know again this is all about practicing learning over time and this and that right so this will go ahead and help you out okay wow we're almost at a thousand likes guys let's keep going this is sick all right so this is how you would do it so now when i dispatch the action set origin i can pass in a value and that value will come through here and it will go ahead and update the data layer. So this is how we do it, right? So I'm gonna have two more examples of this. And when we come to use this, it'll make a lot more sense and that will actually help us out a bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in two more examples, like I said, for destination and set travel time. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in here. So destination, set travel time, exact same, you know, sort of procedure. And we're gonna go ahead and manipulate that part of the data layer with the action when it comes in. So this is all pre part of the preparation for getting this up and running, okay? I love you got your, your positivity, guys. Everyone's saying nice, you know, we've got Sean, Tino, Scratch. Thank you so much, guys, for your positivity. It really, really is awesome stuff. We just hit 1,000 likes already in 37 minutes. Jay, if you're watching this, my assistant, God damn, dude, we're killing it. <laughs> this is crazy. Wow, Tino says, what playlist are you using for the music on your stream? We're actually using uh, the Papa Fan playlist. It's available in the description right now. All you need to do is sign up to the newsletter. We send you it straight away. So definitely do that if you're enjoying the music because this is my personal coding playlist. I listen to this when I actually code. So it's tailored for how I enjoy to code. Okay. So we've gone ahead and prepared that data layer, right? The second thing I want to do is obviously we have this beautiful data layer. I need to expose the rest of my application to those actions. So that way I can use the actions. Otherwise, if I kind of hide it away in this file, how the hell is the rest of my app supposed to know? So we need to export these, you know, actions so that the rest of our app can pull it in and use it where we need to. So here I say export const, right? And basically we pass in all the actions here. So I'm gonna say set origin, uh, set destination and set travel time information. And we're gonna go ahead and pop this in. Now this is something called destructuring. And what we're actually doing is we're exporting our navigation slice actions and we're pulling out these three things. And we're basically, all we're doing really right here, right, is we're accessing our navigation actions and we're just exporting each action available so that way the rest of the app can go ahead and tap into it. That's all we're doing here, okay? So this allows us, this line here allows us to go ahead and, you know, grab that outside the app. Um, so when we do imports elsewhere, that's why it's working. Okay. And as always, guys, if this is it, you know, if this is tricky for you. Like I said, React Basics 101 is free. Second link in the description, you can get it for free on Skillshare. So make sure you take advantage of that while it's live. Second link in the description. Yeah. Like I said, I'm trying to help you guys out wherever I can. So hopefully that should give you guys a bit of a boost up. Okay. So the second thing we need to do is actually have some selectors. So when we push information into the data layer, like I said, we need to pull it back 
from the data layer as well. So we just figured out how to push information to the data layer, but how do we actually go ahead and grab it from that data layer, right? The way we grab it from the data layer is we go ahead and include something called selectors. Okay. Now a good practice for selectors is you have one selector for each item in your initial state. So in this case, a selector for the origin, a selector for the destination, a selector for the travel time information. So I'm going to write the first one and here we do export again. We're going to use this selector to pull information elsewhere in the app. So I need to export it const. And we're going to say the, the sort of standard is you say select what the variable name is. So in this case, select the origin. And again, we get access to the state. So whatever the current state looks like. And all I'm doing here is I'm doing a direct return. So this is an arrow function where if you don't include the curly braces, it's actually a direct return. So it will return when you call this. And we're all we're going to do is return the state. We're going to go into the navigation slice, right? So imagine how it's kind of divided up right now. So state.nav.origin. So what I'm doing is, is when I call this or use this selector, it should go into the state.nav.origin and give me the current value that we have inside the data layer, right? And I'm going to repeat this for destination and travel time information. Okay. Easy as that. The final thing I need to do is actually export, you know, my navigation slides. So that way, you know, I can hook it up to my store and it all works the way we need to. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm actually going to do so a farhan says I love your content will you be posting a video later on yes dude uh, I will be posting this video all my lives go straight up afterwards okay so enjoy it and uh, hopefully it's useful for you so we're going to do export default because we want to have one primary def uh, sort of export from this file and we're actually going to call that nav slice dot reducer now remember we had reducer somewhere else and you're probably wondering where the hell did the reducer you know where did i hear that before we actually have the reducer or we sort of imagine like a string that connects this to the store that actually is called the reducer and we go here and ah here it was we pull that navigation reducer through from the way we export it so it goes from here to here and then we connect it to the store and just like that we now have our store set up Right, so this is actually configured that data layer. So that was probably the most tricky part of the entire build. Right, so I kid you not, that was probably the most tricky part of this build. So now that you got past that, well done. Right, so and, and I see we still got 600 people that, that, that are with me now. So let me know in the comments if that was you know clear enough. Right, but that should have helped you out, and we, and that's the first part of setting this up. We have the store now. We export it, which means in our app I can import it. So if I go ahead and say store equals store. And I should be able to import this from my store, right? So if you're wondering how I do that trick, yeah, I go to the end of store, control space bar, and you see here it says store and it says auto import from store. So if I click it, boom, it found it, it imports it into the file. So we just set our Redux, boom, right? Done. We can get rid of it. So Redux is now inside of our application. Let's see if the app runs, right? So what I'm gonna do is command J. And then here we've got a little bit of a freaking out happening. So I'm going to do a refresh and it says reloading. Let's see what happens. New update available, downloading. So it's building out the bundle. So give it a little bit of time. Be patient with it. Let's build Uber. Amazing, right? That's amazing. That means it works. Ryan says super helpful details. Love it, right? Thank you so much, Mahidi as well. Awesome stuff. You explain Redux each time with ease. Thank you so much, Michael. I was really worried there that I kind of went a bit fast, but I think that was, a, I think, I think we nailed it, guys. I think that was good. Um, almost about to hit 1,100 likes. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You guys are getting, this is a permanent smile on my face right now. All right, so we have the provider done. Okay, so now we have our, you know, our React Native app and we have it supercharged it with Redux. So Redux, you know, everyone says it's so hard to implement Redux. See, we did it, right? Don't worry about it. It's not that hard, right? We actually figured it out pretty good. So the second thing we're going to do is create the home screen. This is going to be the first screen that we see on the page. And this is going to be where the home screen lives. So what I actually want to do here is you should typically have a high level overview on your app component. So at this point, I'm going to create a home screen. Now, what's really nice here and what I would recommend is go to your extensions right now and go over and type in ES7 React Redux GraphQL snippets. Make sure you install this because it will help you out a lot. And it also works for React Native. And then what we're going to do is actually create a screens folder. So this is a standard. You go ahead and create a screens folder and this is going to represent each of the screens in our application. So what I'm actually going to do here is create a screen and I'm going to call this the home screen. And all this is, is a functional component. So what I can do here is I can say react native functional 
export component so a functional component which is exported and do an s to add a style sheet in as well and there you go and if you're wondering can you do the underscore one which doesn't include the import react you actually need to do that right now uh, maybe they'll change it later for react native but right now you need that okay guys the retention today is sick thank you so much guys uh, and please don't spam the chat thank you arjun for cleaning it up all right so we've got the home screen so i'm going to say i am i oops i am the home screen and i don't know if you guys know but like this vibe is sick right you know when we're coding like the music so if you like it again it's available in the description uh be sure to check it out so we've got the view here with some text i'm the home screen so to get this up and running to get it working the way that we want it what we now need to do is go ahead and hit so let's go ahead and just import it like a normal component say home screen and you can see again it auto imports so home screen if it doesn't you can feel free to type it in but it's pulling that home screen in so now we should see i am the home screen let's wait for it let's see if we actually get the i am the home screen so i've got this let's see why is it not really refreshing let's have a look come on j and let's do a refresh r on the app and let's see if it came through okay interesting we're not actually getting this up let's have a look if it's oh it's there so it says it's way at the top right so it's stuck now can you see this little kind of notch at the top right this is called the safe area right and this, well, this is actually not the safe area because a lot of these phones nowadays have a notch right and we don't want the information to ever go into that notch so what you have to do is you have to use something called a safe area view if you use the normal view it will go up into the notch oh we got another donation what the hell oh my god jelena just donated 50 dollars. she said drinks on me thank you for everything that you're doing for the community being a member of the papa fam and learning from your code helped me and i land a dream a dream job as a react native developer long live the papa fam jelena she's an awesome member of our community and if you want to join it as well links in the description but wow thank you so much guys we are literally I, I, we're like nearly 200 pounds in uh, we just hit 1.1k likes as well i'm speechless this is like insane oh my god wow this is just like I, i'm speechless on that we hit 1.1k likes jelena dropped some fire nearly a 200 pounds on the chat revenue you guys are sick thank you i'm gonna promise you i'll keep this coming right so we've got the view over here so what i'm gonna do is actually have a safe area view so i'm actually gonna import a second one called safe area view right and this one basically just accounts for any you know unsafe area so depending on what phone you're on it will account for it so now all i need to do is replace the safe uh, the normal view with that hit save and then you can see look it actually goes inside the view now so that prevents you know that issue of you know having uh sort of things creep up into that on the space that we don't want it to go into okay so there we go we have the home screen looking pretty decent right now now what we can do is i'm going to give you a quick example of how you can style something so imagine we've got this text here and i'm going to say style equals and then we've got our style sheet down here which is similar to our kind of css and yes you can export that and have it in a separate file but here i'm going to say styles dot right and for this text i just want to show you an example if i did like text right and i said the let's just say the color is blue and i went ahead and did st uh, styles dot text you can see it changed to blue right now you can code like this there's nothing wrong with coding like that in react native right there's absolutely nothing wrong with it but what i would recommend is it gets a little bit kind of you know i'll say it gets a little bit tedious in my opinion i don't like it i love tailwind i like the quick speedy nerfs of tailwind so what i would recommend guys is instead what you actually go ahead and do is oh what's up Roland from Uganda yeah what I would say is, is instead you do you include something called a tailwind so it's actually called tailwind I'm going to show you guys tailwind uh react native class names so it's this one here okay so I'm actually going to go ahead and drop this into the uh, application right now what this does is it allows you to go ahead and have a tailwind like syntax to go ahead and do things and you can also have android so it only apply a style for android and so forth if you're new to tailwind definitely check out another build or a tailwind youtube channel it's sick them guys are doing an awesome job over there and if they're watching this ever you guys are awesome so carry on doing what you're doing right i love what you guys are doing and it helped me out so much in terms of coding so we're going to install this so i'm going to go ahead and grab this and i'm going to do yarn add so let's go ahead and do command j second terminal and do yarn add and paste so yarn add tailwind react native class names and i'm going to show you how it works now it doesn't have 
every single thing right that is uh you know available in tailwind but it has most of it right i mean well i mean most of the stuff that you probably need right and that's for various reasons remember it needs to go ahead and compile down into ios android and all that stuff so it needs to be you know it's a bit harder to account for everything so what we do is once we do it we just import this tailwind object okay now imagine i get rid of these styles so we should go back to the boring you know oops let's get back to this we should get back to the boring sort of you know black text okay looks pretty boring right now so i'm going to go ahead and say style equals and i'm going to do tailwind and then back ticks okay now i can use my typical tailwind stuff so if i went ahead and said text uh let's say red 500 we actually get red text and if i did p 10 we actually get a padding of 10 as well so you see how much like quicker it is to use tailwind with this now if i wanted to combine tailwind with um what we're doing here right with the normal sort of style syntax i can put an array here and i can do a comma and then i can have my normal sort of you know i can either at this point type in styles.text and so forth so you can actually combine this so if i do this now it will apply this then it will apply styles.text in which case it overwrite it overwrite it or you can actually have inline if, if you really wanted to here and you can have like color let's just say purple and then you can see it goes to purple okay so that's my introduction into going ahead and doing this right so so you should now know that we can combine the two and that will help you understand how you go ahead and build the rest of it out okay so what i'm actually going to do is for the safe area view right now i'm going to actually going to include a style and this style is going to be tailwind and it's going to have back ticks and it's going to say the background is going to be white so bg white and i want to have a height of a full i want to have a full height basically okay now if i want to show you if this is actually working bg red 100 you can see it changed the color of it and you get all the different shades so if i do 900 you'll get that as well i'm going to do bg white so we get a white background this is going to be the home screen right so it's going to be relatively nice simple to have a home screen up here okay so this is looking pretty good right now i want to have the uber logo next okay so what i'm actually going to be doing here is having a view right uh, i'm gonna have a like sort of a container inside our app so like it's similar to a div right so instead of this i'm gonna have a view okay and inside my view just remember whenever you see a view just think of a div very similar to do right we still have 600 likes wow 1100 likes guys we're about to hit 1200 keep on you know smash the thumbs up button if you're enjoying this right now and uh, awesome stuff right karthik says uh, where do i sign up for the challenge first link in the description so check it out dude okay so we've got the view here so i'm going to go ahead and use an image tag this is new this is actually something which we use um in react native so i'm going to import this from our lovely react native uh, module and then we've got this now so what the first thing i want to do here is actually have an uber logo so i've made it very simple for you guys i've actually shortened all the urls so what we have here is actually a, a nice sort of source attribute that we can pass in now i'm going to pass in uh, a jsx sort of tag right here so we have to put the quick squiggly brackets and then i'm going to pass in an object and then here this takes something called a uri which is similar to a url uniform resource identifier and here i'm simply going to pass in the url for the image All right so you can go ahead and copy that i made it. it's pretty simple for you guys to copy now it's not showing that's because we need to give it a style okay so we need to actually pass this in a style and you guessed it i'm actually going to go ahead and use i'm probably going to use an inline style here actually so for this one I'm going to pass in a style oops sorry style and i'm actually going to say something like let's go ahead and have sorry what am i doing uh, it should be style equals wait a second what am i doing oh yeah okay there we go got, got a bit mixed up there outside <laughs> right so for the source here here we're gonna have a style i was wondering i was like what the hell is my you know what's everything, what's everything going wrong all right so we got this and now i'm actually gonna do an inline style here and say width should be let's just say 100 um height should be 100 and you'll see there's times where i use tailwind there's times where i use the normal stuff it's because in some situations i can't i don't have the right x you know i don't have the right modifier in tailwind so i just use the actual native css and here i'll say contain okay now you'll notice when we're doing this it has camel casing so that's just a slight difference to know about there we go uber right so we have uber there now uber's touching the side i don't like that so i'm going to go to the view which is surrounding everything add a style and to make our life easier we're going to use tailwind back ticks afterwards and we'll say padding of five and if you just do p5 it means all around top left bottom right boom pads it out now it looks a little bit better it looks already quite nice right um okay this is looking sick right, let's carry on going guys so what we're going to do now 
Oh, nice. George says, what's up, Sonny? You're amazing, man. Keep it great. I appreciate it, George. Thank you for watching, dude. And still 600. I can't believe you guys. You guys are incredible. While I've got you, remember, sign up for the challenge. Starts next Tuesday. First link in the description. Airbnb, huge challenge next week. And it's going to be complete from beginner or if you want to go ahead and you know up your skills with, with if you've coded before in net react and you haven't done next year's perfect place for you ten thousand pounds worth of prizes it's gonna be sick be there first link in the description okay so we've got uber up here now what i want to do next is i'm actually going to go ahead and have let's think about this let's think about this i'm going to have firstly let's have the navigation options right so the navigation options are going to be the stuff where you saw you know it says like get a ride and or get a sort of like order some food right i'm actually going to have those things first all right so we're actually going to create that right now so i'm actually going to create a new folder called components because i'm going to create a reusable component here so components inside the components folder i'm going to create something called nav options .js, okay and for nav options, this is going to be, again, like I mentioned, these are going to be two sort of cutouts that are going to have everything that we need. So React Native, Functional, Component with Stylesheet. There we go, simple as. And inside here, we're going to use a few new things. So you're going to get introduced to quite a lot of new tech today. We don't actually need access to the style sheet, so we can simplify ourselves here. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this in inside the home screen. So underneath, inside of our view, I'm actually going to have nav options like so so it's imported it up at the top and there we go we got nav options okay so obviously we can't see anything now because we have nothing in nav options but we're going to keep on create uh, keep on crashing it with this okay so let's check this out so i'm going to say hello world hit save and we should see hello world that's because nav options is being populated there now i've got two pieces of information right now okay so i've got let's check this out i've got a data array Right, so this is a uh, an array which has two pieces of information in. Each one has a unique ID. In this case, I've kept it simple: one, two, three, four, five, six. Because any kind of you know item in a list or anything which is shown in a list format should have different IDs. So we've got IDs here. The first title is going to be "Get a Ride." The second title is going to be "Order Food." Right. So this is going to eventually render out the two sort of you know things that you see on the screen. Each one's going to have an image. One's going to have a picture of a car. One's going to have a picture of some food. And then the screen that you hit. So basically when I click that button, what screen should it go to? So right now we're on the home screen, but once we, you know, implement React Native navigation, it should go to the map screen. And this one goes to the eat screen, which we're not going to build today. Right? So it's just a sort of demo, a demo feature. Right? So you see that's why we're in change in future. So whenever you have a list of items that you want to render out in react native to render it out optimally you use something called a flat list now a flat list is one component it takes some data in this case it's an array of data we call it data and then what we do is we have something called a render item so it will go through that list and for every single time it sees an item on there it will go ahead and it will render out whatever you tell it to render out so i'm going to do that right now and we're going to see the example of that okay so rather than a view we're going to get rid of that we're going to say flat list okay so auto import from react native and then it's a self-closing in component and this will actually sort of eventually render out everything that we need okay so what we're going to do um we're actually going to go ahead and say first thing is we're going to pass in the data Right, so this is actually the data and then the second thing is typically it's a vertical list by default i want this to be a horizontal list and then i'm going to say for each item what shall we do All right so we should be doing something in this case you actually get the item itself what that you're iterating through so you get this and so basically first thing is it's an arrow function that returns something okay so this is an arrow function which is going to return a component but every time we loop through we get a destructured item so basically this means that we get access to the individual item that we're looping through so what i want to show on the screen if i use item.title for example i'll get the get a ride when i'm rendering something out on the screen so let's just give this a quick test okay so i want the actual sort of things that get rendered on the screen to be touchable i want to be able to touch them and then it looks like i'm actually touching a button so in react native we call this touchable opacity because when i touch it the opacity should change so it looks like a sort of touchable element so i'm going to say render out a touchable opacity and you also have a few other things touchable highlight and all sorts of other stuff pressable is another one touchable opacity so i'm going to import that from react native there we go and this touchable opacity is actually a parent component and inside of it i'm just going to say for a quick example text i'm just going to say item.title 
right? So item.title. And then let's go ahead and hit save, right? So you see, get a ride, order food. So right now they're just being rendered next to each other. If I got rid of the horizontal, you'll see it renders like this. And notice how flat list is a list, so it's draggable, okay? Now, if I click it, you see how the opacity changes, right? So obviously it's a little bit hard to see that, but I can't zoom into the phone at this point. So you can see now that it looks pretty, pretty good right now, okay? So obviously we're gonna make that look beautiful. Now, whenever you have a list, you should have a key, right? So what they have is a nice little fun, uh, attribute here. It's called key extractor. And what key extractor is, is it simply goes ahead and gives you the item. So again, when you loop through the item ID, you know, all this stuff, it'll give you that. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the item.id to be the unique identifier for our key. And that, that keeps it optimal and efficient. Now, if you don't know why you need a key, you should always be using a key. I show all my builds with keys. Uh, it allows React to know which part of the, key, you know, like if we add an item in the list, it says don't re-render everything, just re-render the one, one, the one sort of entry with the new key, right? So it knows which stuff has changed. It allows it to be a hell of a lot more efficient. Okay, so this looks pretty good, right? Next thing I'm gonna do is actually gonna go ahead and uh, let's create an image that gets rendered out as well. So we've got our, I'm actually gonna do something a bit more complicated than just have, you know, a, a bit of text out. So I'm actually gonna have a view inside. So imagine like a div. And inside this, I'm gonna have an image, a text, and, a, and an icon. So we're gonna introduce some icons and React Native elements in as well. So I'm gonna firstly say, I wanna render out an image. Now we already used an image. We know how to do this, right? So it's not relatively, you know, it's not gonna be super new. I just did it before with the Uber logo. So firstly, we need to actually import that in. So I'm gonna to go to this control space bar at the end of our component, go down, it should say auto import, hit enter. It's now imported, nice. Then we're gonna go ahead and say source, right? So source over here. Source should take an argument. And again, we can pass in a URI or, so we are gonna pass in a URI. And this URI is going to come from the data, so the yeah, item. So in this case, item.image. So item.image. Hit save, and there we go. Now again, we can't see it because we haven't given it a style. So in this case, I'm going to give it a style, and each item that we see is going to have a width of 120, a width of 120, and a height of 120. Okay, so height of 120. Let me know if you're enjoying this, by the way. 1.2K likes. That's what I'm talking about, guys. The energy today is sick. We still have 550 people watching. This is so amazing to have you guys here. Honestly, 1.2K likes. Let's keep on going, guys. Absolutely incredible stuff, right? Width, height, and let's carry on. So we're going to have uh, also resize mode contain. And this is basically like, you know, uh, it's going to keep the aspect ratio. So we've seen it contained before. And there you go. We have a car and we have some food, right? So this is looking good already. And that's because it's looping through and it's showing it. Now, again, I actually want to put back the horizontal because I want it to be a horizontal list, right? Nice. We've got two options coming up. This is looking pretty clean at this point, right? Tech guy and says, hello, Sonny. What's up, dude? Um, you can change it to classes. Remember, all I'm, anytime I do an inline, you can class it, right? You can also add tail into it. I'm showing you a range of different things today so that way you guys can use it, combine it however you want, right? It's just to teach you how to, you know, you can actually have multiple things. It doesn't have to be one, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have some text. Now this text is going to have item.title. There you go. And now we should see get a ride, order food. Okay. And then I also want an icon, right? I want an icon actually underneath it, which is kind of like a go sort of arrow sign, right? So for this, we're going to be using something called a React Native Elements, right? So before I actually do that, I'm going to style this a little bit more so it looks a little bit decent before we carry on. So I'm going to go ahead and go into here, add a style, and we're going to be using our beautiful Tailwind, right? So Tailwind, if we are going to use it, we're going to need to, get, going to, need to import it up at the top over here. So I'll we'll import Tailwind from your native class names, hit save, and then here I'm going to say Tailwind, and I'm going to give it firstly a few different changes, right? So I'm going to give it a padding of two, right? So there it pads a little bit more. Padding left of six, right? So I'm going to give it a padding left of six. I want to give a bit more padding on left. Padding bottom of eight for later, right? So if I do that right now, you can see a bit more spacing and a padding top of four, right? So I've actually overrided a lot of the padding too. And then we're going to say background should be gray. So BG gray 200, keep it kind of light. And then you see they're touching right now. So I'm going to do a margin of two so that they're not touching. And a width of 40 gives it a nice kind of space, right? So that already is looking pretty damn good, right? Oh, you know what? You guys are saying hydrate. Do you know why I'm not hydrating so much? Because... I don't know what is, guys. <laughs> the bladder is not holding as strong as it used to. And these streams get on for longer and longer. So I will hydrate. I'm going to literally do a dab today. 
and we'll, we'll you know we'll keep that. <laughs> that that's enough for now all right so what i'm actually going to do is i'm actually going to sort of i've got some new tracks here as well so this i actually like this track i was going to the other day and i thought it's kind of cool all right so let's get to 1.3k likes guys let's do this Gushan says thank you for your videos they help me a lot amazing stuff these said yes sir that's what we're talking about guys this is looking pretty good all right we're doing a good pace let's carry on with the momentum all right so for the text i'm going to say style all right and can you guys hear the music well by the way or not is it too loud too quiet let me know all right so here for the style i'm gonna say luke says gotta go something but i'll be doing this over the weekend amazing stuff dude luke thank you so much once again yeah, so here I say style and then I'm going to say tailwind dash dash sort of the back ticks and then I'll see MT uh, MT2 right uh, margin top two and I'll make the text kind of larger there we go looks a little bit better now font semi bold right so font semi bold as well and look at that it looks a lot a lot cleaner thank you so much we just got a wicked donation from korea it says i'm your korean big fan i can't read the name it says i can speak english but just a little bit i'm starting to react from your youtube channel thank you very much appreciate you dude sick nice that's awesome man thank you so much so that's looking pretty clean at this point All right okay and then let's continue on. So now I want to have a logo, right? To finish this off, I want to have a nice little logo. So to have the logo, I'm actually going to be installing React Native Elements. All right, so I'm going to go over here, back to my browser and type in React Native Elements. And I'll show you guys, this is an awesome library with the material design system. So we've got nice material-like designs. Click Get Started. And then here you can see Yarn Add React Native Elements to get started up, right? So I'm going to do this. And you can use NPM, it's up to you. We're not going to get into a debate. Yarn add React Native Elements. See what I mean? It's kind of catchy, right? Alphan saying this build will go viral. Hell yeah, dude. Next week's challenge should go viral. Hey, remember, first link in the description, sign up. Right. There we go. We've installed it. We just did React. Uh, what did we do? We just did uh, Yarn add React Native Elements. Awesome stuff, guys. Continue on. Just got a job as a front end dev. Thanks to your builds. Thank you so much, Mamik Das. That's sick. Right, Carla says looks a bit complicated, but yeah, don't worry about that, dude. Remember, if you're if this you're finding this complicated, second link in the description is React Nate, uh, the React Basics 101 pack that I give you for free on Skillshare. So check out that link. It's only for a little bit, so it's, it will go after a while. So check it out now. Okay, this is pretty cool. We've got that as well. Now the next thing we need to do is actually add in the icon pack. So you see here, Yarn Add React Native Vector Icons. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in as well. So Yarn Add React Native Vector Icons. I just says it's a guitar. Yeah, it's, it's proper. It's catchy, you know. I find it well catchy. All right, while that's loading up, yeah, it's just a little change of scenery. There we go. Let's carry on. Nice. Okay, so we've got Uber Clone YouTube. There we go. We've done it. React Native Vector Icons. Once we've done that, guys, we need to now go ahead and also finally add in this. This is the Yarn Add React Native Safe Area Context. Now, this is not the typical safe area that we know. This is kind of for the icon, so that way they know where they're at and they don't kind of go into dangerous areas. So we need to go ahead and actually install that as well, right? So let's go ahead and do yarn add react native safe area context. Again, it's different to the one that we were using previously, okay? Awesome stuff. All right, Segan, Segan, this is great job, Sunny. Thank you so much, dude, appreciate the support. Let's carry on. So we've done that now. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually see this import from react native safe area context provider and then we're going to actually wrap the entire app again app should be a high level overview of your entire app right makes sense because it's called app so we go over to app.js and then you go ahead and do import safe area provider and it's up to you where you want to put this i actually have a preference here i would say chuck it underneath your provider here let's go ahead and pop it in here so let's go ahead and chuck it there so you see notice the, the convention here you have providers. These are just known as higher order sort of components, right? So safe area provider. That's actually damaged this bit a little bit. So I'm going to fix that in a second. Uh, we'll sort that out. Don't worry about it. Right? We hit save. And now we've got safe area provider with our home screen. Okay. So I'm going to go into my home screen and let's check this out. So my safe area view. Interesting. So right now something screwed up. So let's just go back to my actual application and let's just refresh the bundle R for reloading. There we go. Something went weird there. Right. 
And again, use this for your sort of controls, right? If you hit, hit um, question mark to get all the sort of options as well, if you ever get lost, right? That's always kind of a handy thing that helps me out. Uh, and if you need to kind of access the developer tools, you can press D here. And, oh no, oh, damn it, I opened up. Okay, here we go, we're opening up Chrome. Wait for the computer to start screaming. Right. Oh God, when I'm live, I do not use Chrome. It's horrible. Okay. There we go. See, oh my God, it maxes my RAM when I do that. All right. Chrome's not offering when we're live, guys. Okay, let's carry on. So this is looking pretty good. Okay. Now, when I click get a ride, so first you just add in the logo, uh, the icon, I guess, nav options. Let's go over to navigation options and let's go ahead and add in the logo down here. So what's really nice about this library, right? And what's pretty cool about... Um, react native elements is that they give you a bunch of things you get components like over here you get tons of different components that you can go ahead and use they give you examples the one i'm interested in a lot of the time is icon packs okay so you can actually go ahead and use the icon packs they have quite a nice little directory where you can actually search it as well um, you can just type in react native elements icon searcher and you'll find it and that's where you can pretty much search through but you see you get access to all these different icon sets okay so all you have to do is pass in a few values that will actually allow you to go ahead and get these different things right so what we can do is we can say access the ant design icon set and get me the you know the arrow right or something like that and that typically works really really well okay so let's carry on so we're going to actually use this to get that built now so i'm going to go ahead and pop in the icon okay now the icon is going to be so there we go adjust with the music a little bit so we got the icon over here and guys we're so close to 1.3k likes let's keep going so the icon we're going to go ahead and say here the type is going to be from ant design ant design and i'm actually going to go ahead and pass in the color and the name of the sort of exact icon that i want right so you can see it says cannot find the icon variable that's because we need to import it from react native elements like so All right pop that in there and then we should be able to see it pop through in just a second Right. If it does ever get stuck, you can go ahead and just do an R to reload your app manually. It says new update. There we go. Boom. And then you can see now we get a nice little icon, right? But that's not all, right? It doesn't look that good at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my uh, actual icon itself. And I'm going to override its style. Oh, actually add in some more styles, right? Now, this is what I love about Tailwind. You can do so many nice little circle tricks. I'm going to say style equals Tailwind back tick, back tick. Material, uh, margin top two give it a little bit more distance from the top. And then I'm also going to say, oh, sorry, padding of two, sorry, padding of two. And then I'm going to give it a background of black. I hit save. And then we should see in a second. So it's not actually hot refreshing quite that nice. Let me double check. Did I turn something off? Let's do... Da, da, da. Um, so hot refresh. Toggle opening developer tools, open up, blah, blah, blah. Select project, toggle menu, M. Hot refresh. No, we're good. We're good. Okay, so I guess I'll hit save afterwards and it'll work. So we'll do BG black. And then here I'll say rounded full. And I'll do width of 10 and a margin top of four. Okay, now hit save on that. And if I go back to my app and just hit R to refresh, right? Sometimes it's not going to refresh well, but there you go. That looks awesome, right? That looks really, really nice, right? So this is the annoying thing. Uh, it's a very good question, actually. Does the auto-complete work for Tailwind? So that's the only thing I'll say it doesn't work when you're doing React Native, unless you found an extension that I didn't, right? But um, overall, yeah, that's what I found. Okay, so this looks pretty good at this point. So that's pretty sick. Now, when I click get a ride, I want it to shift me over to another screen. And that screen, we actually provide over here. So map screen is this case, right? So the first step is I'm going to create the map screen itself. So that way we have something to shift over. Then I'm going to implement something called React Native Navigation, which will actually allow us to have that screen switching. And you know that really nice kind of swipe back functionality or on Android, you have the back button. All of that stuff will work once we implement this. So get ready for that. Okay, smash the thumbs up button if you enjoy this, right? Still have 500 people, half a thousand people watching right now. That's sick. Let's keep going, guys. So command B, I'm going to go to my screens. And then here I'm going to go ahead and say map screen. All right. So I'm going to do map screen dot JS react native functional export with style sheet. Boom. All right. And then here I'll say here is the map stuff dot 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 save. Okay. So we've got the map screen over here. 
And then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to have, so right now in app.js, we only render a home screen, right? So how do we have, you know, two screens? How does that work? And how do we do all this sort of navigation stuff? So we're going to use something called a React Native Navigation. This is an awesome library that allows us to do our navigation for our React Native apps. So you can go ahead and read the docs. And again, I'm showing you this because it's going to be handy for you to go ahead and do it in your journey and go ahead and, you know, research and see how I'm doing this stuff. And I think that's going to help you out quite a lot, right? So let's keep on going, guys. And remember, if it's kind of hard for you, second link React Basics 101 from Skillshare for free, it'll help you get up to scratch and then you can come back to this build. So I'm going to click Yarn, Yarn add React Na Navigation Native. Come back here, come on J, come on B to hide that annoying sidebar. Let's do that now, come on J, come on B, and then second terminal, and I'm gonna do yarn add React na Navigation Native. Okay, Aditya, what's up dude? Now, what we're gonna do is we have to install a few other things, right? So in this case, you see, this is interesting here. So Expo install, not yarn add or yarn install. This means that Expo is going to do a bunch of more kind of complicated installs. And as I mentioned before, Expo is awesome because it will handle the iOS dependencies and Android. And all we do is do Expo install, right? We don't have to handle all this other stuff, which if you've done React Native CLI stuff, you'll know what I'm talking about. Expo simplifies it. So I'm going to click copy here, go over to my code and paste that. You can see Expo install and there's a bunch of different, when it has a space, it's installing more than one dependency. So these are all the things that we need to allow us to get, you know, our React Native navigation working. Okay. Uh, Karthik says, I like how you say native, native, native. Delcio is, this guy is awesome. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate you. If you're new to the channel, let me know right now. Love to see who's watching for the first time. Okay. So we got this up and running and we got that working pretty good. We've done all of this stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and I need to import this into my app.js file to get everything loaded in the way I need it. So go back over to our file, pop this in at the top, gesture handler. That's all for the, you know, swipe back and all that stuff. All right. And then we go down and then we need to do the navigation container. So another provider like syntax. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, pop this here and where do we wrap this one? Right. So safe area providers here, I would say have it. This is sort of, you know, still presentational kind of. So I would say above uh, underneath the provider and I'm going to say navigation container. So underneath my Redux provider, I mean, I'm going to grab this, pop this up here, hit save. And then now make sure it all works, right? So it says refreshing. If it freezes like mine, I think it's only freezing for me because I'm live, but I'm going to do R to refresh. And then you see it comes back, right? Everything's good. I would recommend, you know, constantly doing that because it's going to actually help you out a little bit, right? 1.3K likes, boom, 500 people watching this still. So sick. So, so grateful. Wow. I can't believe that, guys. Honestly, right? React Native content is killing it, right? So we've got the safe area provider home screen. Okay, cool. So the next thing we're going to do is click next. And I'm showing you this again because I want you to go through it yourself. Click yarn and you want to install the stack. Now, what the hell is a stack, right? While it's installing, I will go ahead and tell you what a stack is. So a stack, while it's installing, stacks. All they are, basically, imagine if I'm on one screen and I press the button to go to the map screen. Think of, I have a stack. So when I'm on the home screen, this is my stack, right? When I press like the go to the map screen or I go to that screen, I stack on something. Now, when I swipe back, it knows to pop off that thing and it goes back a screen, right? So this is called a stack navigator. That's why it's called stack because you literally stack screens up and then you can swipe back, swipe back, swipe back, and then you can keep going down and down and down. That makes it really kind of cool to do pretty pretty easy stuff and that built is built in with you know the swipe back feature on ios the little back button on android everything works kind of you know quick and swiftly out the box so we just went ahead and installed that the next thing i'm going to do is actually go ahead and set up our stack navigator okay so you see here it says create a stack navigator so we're going to import the create stack navigator let's go ahead and we've got oh we got ukraine in the house nice awesome stuff Guys, if you're watching and you're not already subscribed, please remember, hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel out hugely. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. So what we need to do is actually create something called a stack, right? And again, this is just preparing us for that stack of pages where we can swipe back and all that stuff, 
right? So we're gonna do const stack equals create stack navigator. And then what we need to do is actually create something called the stack navigator, right? So where am I gonna put this? I'm gonna put this all inside of, let's put it inside of the safe area provider. Now what I'm actually gonna do is, you know, get rid of that for a second. So it's all in the safe area provider. And I'm gonna say stack dot navigator, okay? And this is going to be a navigator. And basically what we do now is we include all the screens that we can possibly navigate to, right? So in this case, we've got map screen, home screen. And the way we do that is we say stack dot screen. This is similar to like React Router, right? So similar to React Router and the different routes that we can have. Very similar approach, right? So this is actually going to be stack screen with a capital S. Make sure you don't make that mistake. It's a self-closing component and it takes some attributes. The name of this screen is gonna be home screen. Now this is important, these, these names, because you use that to navigate to different screens down the line. What screen should render when we're here? We're gonna say we should render out the home screen component when we try and go there, home screen, okay? And then you can pass in, you know, additional options, right? So I'm gonna leave it as that for now and show you what happens. But I'm gonna get rid of my home screen here and we should see that this actually works pretty nice. All right, so if I go ahead and do this again, I need to do command J and, and hit my manual refresh for some. Okay, there we go. It worked. And now you can see, look, we're on a screen called home screen. Now in Uber, you, I don't really like that, right? I mean, like that works pretty nice in the beginning. Yeah, right? and, and, and what happens is if you go to the next screen, it will have a nice little back arrow and all that stuff. Well, I want to do some custom design today, right? So the way you can do get rid of that is you can do it two ways. You can do it in the component home screen or you can do it here. Right, uh, so here we can do options and we can pass an object array. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. An object array of options. Now here I can say header shown, false. Oh, we got, we got a donation from Cuds Skills. Keep it up, man. Don't worry, dude. I really appreciate anything that's huge. Thank you so much, man. I really massively appreciate you for watching and tuning in. Awesome stuff, man. Okay, so let's continue on. Oh, this is so sick, man. You guys are awesome. All right, so header shown. Now you can see it got rid of that header, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna create another screen called the map screen, okay? So what I can do here is I can literally copy and paste, and we're gonna call this one the map screen. And this is gonna be for the map screen component. And you see each one can have different headers shown and all that sort of stuff. Now, did we create our map screen yet? Yes, we did, okay? So here is the map stuff. So what I can do now is go back and I can import it. So go to the end of the line here, control space bar, and uh, sometimes it doesn't work, but let's try and find it. Did I import it, map screen? Now, so I can just, you know, rename this to map screen and change that, map screen. There we go, we've got our map screen, hit save. Okay, is everything still working? Good, we're happy, we're good, we're, we're pretty in a nice place, right? So now what we're gonna do guys is, we are gonna go ahead and say, oh nice, John Smith. Thank you so much, dude. I think you just dropped a, a little donation. I can't, it came through somewhere, but I appreciate that, dude. Um, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and when I click get a ride, I want it to navigate to that screen. So you're gonna see how we do navigation now, okay? A few ways you can actually approach this. So we go to the home screen. Now, because the home screen is, you know, it's rendered at, here underneath our navigator, we can actually get the home screen, like something called a navigation prop. Now, this can be kind of, you know, like a tedious, it looks a bit messy, right? So I like to use something called the use navigation hook. Also, thank you so much for Brian Creighton, who just dropped $5 donations and your videos are always fire. Appreciate you, dude. You guys are getting me hyped up today. I have so much energy, honestly. I was pretty nervous about this one. I was like, it's a huge build. How are we gonna do it? How are we gonna do this one? But you guys are killing it. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for being, you know, just strong as always. This is what Papa Farm's about, right? And we're almost at 1.4K likes. Let's keep going. All right, so when I click get a ride, we should be able to transition over, right? So how the hell do we do that? So when I go to my, we're actually gonna do it on the click here. So I'm gonna go to my nav options and then for the touchable opacity. So which is each of these things that get rendered out. So when we render the item out, what do I wanna do, right? So I wanna get access to that user navigation, uh, sort of, you know, that, that, that navigation prop allows me to navigate around. So I'm gonna say const navigation equals use navigation. And you see, I get a bunch of auto imports so I can go ahead and help myself out here. And this is the same thing as doing this 
and pulling but except we get nice auto complete we get a bunch of other stuff and it's just better in my opinion it looks cleaner it's a lot more easier to help me out with i i prefer this approach right and we hit save now and then what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to have some cool navigation stuff happening so when i press the touchable pass so typically we're used to on click on react right here i do on press and what I do is I pass in, it takes an arrow function. So there we go on press instead. And I do navigation dot navigate, right? And here, what we actually do is we pass in a name or a string and that string directly correlates to the name that we gave here for the stack screen. So that's how it knows where to, where to, to go, right? That's how it knows what to do and where to go. In this case, that map screen comes through on the props here. So you see map screen. So what I can do here, oops, I've got a call coming in. Oh, there we go. Get rid of that. All right. So what I'm actually going to do now is go ahead and do the following. Oops. Where's my stuff gone? Where's my music gone? There we go. We're back. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and say, where am I going? Yeah. Item dot screen. So I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to say item dot screen. Okay. And then save. All right. Item dot screen. So now if I do this, Ooh, navigate over right now. Obviously, we don't have a safe area view for that component. But if I swipe back now, oh, that's smooth, guys. That's really nice, right? And if I try and go to this one, it says, oh, you don't have, you know, a, a screen that's loaded. Do you have a screen named each screen? So you see, it makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Smash the thumbs up button if you if that did make a bit of sense, right? Uh, what's up, Nancy? What's up, Julius? What's up, Adria? Nice stuff. Good stuff, guys. Right, so. In this case, get a ride works, right? That's awesome. So we've got some navigation working right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and create these under sort of UI components, right? And then we're also going to have the Google auto places complete all that good stuff happening shortly, right? So right now, in fact, you know what? Let's do the auto. Let's do the places API. I want to have an input field where when I type in, it comes out with some pretty cool stuff, right? I want to have, you know, when I type in that input field, it'll say, you know, like London, you know, like um, it could say like America or Canada or, you know, Germany and the different locations, addresses and everything. I want to do that stuff right now. And that's going to use something called the Google Places API, okay? Almost at 1.4K likes, amazing stuff, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my home screen. And I'm actually going to render out the following. So on my home screen, I've got, where is it gone? Yeah, I've got the, I'm going to add, actually use a package called Google Places Auto Complete. Okay. So it's a very powerful app, uh, sort of, you know, package that I'm going to use now. So if I go over here and type in React Native Google Places Auto Complete, we're going to use this GitHub library. Okay. So this is a helper library, sort of a nice little module that we can use. And this is the goal that we want to achieve here. Right, so we're going to have this kind of auto complete functionality. First thing we need to do is in, we add this package to our project. Okay. And we need to get a Google Places API key as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. So I'm going to go ahead and say Command J, go to my ZSH, yarn add React Native Google Places auto complete. There we go. Right. The, the energy today is actually untouchable. I think it's actually the most insane energy I've ever seen on one of our builds. It's, it's, it's just crazy, it's mind blowing. Remember, I am running a challenge next Tuesday. So sign up first link in the description for the Airbnb React Next.js challenge. It's gonna be huge. 10,000 pound worth of prizes, right? So it's looking pretty good right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this and then here we need to go ahead and set this up. Now, when you get these keys, right? So what I mean by the keys are, we're gonna be using the Google Directions API. Right, so there's a, there's three things that we're actually going to be using in today's build. It's going to be the Directions API, the Google Places API, which is for the autocomplete, and then the Distance Matrix API, which allows us to have you know all the different things for you know like uh, where it tells me how long it will take to get from point A to point B and all that other stuff. Right, so I would recommend that you need to go ahead and, and you, you I mean, you do need to enable billing on your Google account, but it's completely free up until a certain point. So don't worry. Right? Remember, these are demos. They're good for you to learn and stuff like that. So you just gonna need to do that. And that doesn't mean you just freak out at this point and leave. It means you just get on with it, right? You do this. So we're going to click on this Google Places API. So what you need to do to get to this screen is go to, um, in fact, what we can do is go to Google Cloud Platform. So type in Google Cloud Platform. 
okay and then what we do here is we go ahead and we go to cloud.google.com okay and now here you want to go ahead and have your google account and click on console okay now i've got a few different projects it'll probably load up one of my old projects um so we've got netflix we've got a bunch of other stuff so what i'm actually going to do here is go to the top and you just need to create a new project now there's two there's a few ways of doing this if you create a firebase project say you want to use firebase down the line you create a firebase project it will get created here as well or you can go into cloud.google.com and do it from here yourself i'm going to click on new project over here right so new project and i'm going to go ahead and say something like uh let's just type in uh uber well, let's just say uber demo youtube right and then create okay this is nice and it's going to create the project over here right so once that's done i can click on this drop down here and i can see you see it's creating that for me right so if i click that give it a second uh, uber demo youtube i'm going to click that right and then one that once that's done i can go down here to my navigation menu i'm going to go down to apis and services now you, again as i mentioned you do need to enable a billing account here right so to make all this sort of api stuff work create a billing account set it up i'm not going to go into it now but you're going to need to do that. it's very easy to do by the way then you go to your dashboard for your api and services okay don't worry don't let this freak you out remember just take the video slow right and do it at your own pace it'll work and it'll, you'll enjoy this trust me 1.4k likes that's what i'm talking about that's it 1.5 wow right and then what we're going to do is click this enable api and services and i'm just going to enable all of them right now while we're here right so first thing i'm going to use is the directions api so this one right here directions between multiple locations so i'm going to click this and i'm going to go ahead and set this one up right now okay so i'm going to click on enable right so this one's going to be enable right here and give me one second right so that works pretty nice right so we've got the directions api and uh and then we're going to go ahead and also use places api as well right so we've got directions api here and i'm also going to do places api so we need to find down here that usually has the similar ones here so places api i'm going to click that as well make sure you're in your correct directory here as well so we're going to enable that as well okay and click enable here okay awesome stuff wait for it wait for it wait for it let that sort of do its thing and now we've got our second uh, api so we've got the directions api places api for the autocomplete and the final one is the distance matrix api and that's for all the sort of you know calculations and all that stuff we need to do as well so i'm going to click enable here as well right and now we've enabled all of the things it gives you the pricings and everything but you do get 200 dollars free which is huge for your quota right so now we've enabled all your three apis that's the first step the second thing we need to do is we need to go over to our credentials tab now i'm going to click here and just double check that there's nothing sensitive here but you click into the credentials tab to get a key and this key is really nice way the way it works right so i'm going to show you my credentials tab so we've got this so you've got api keys now right now you have no key but what you want to do is click create credential and what's nice about google platform is you click on create api key over here and it says creating an api key oops okay i'm gonna actually gonna uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna delete that key after right? i'm gonna delete that right now anyway but point is you have an api key right you want to copy this at this point and we're not going to restrict it okay so we're going to click close and then you have your key here right now i'm, I'm going to generate another key in a second so that way that key is not exposed but the point is get that key right copy it get that key and copy it okay now once you have your key that's going to allow you to actually go ahead and access all of the different apis that we have attached over here okay so that's going to allow you to have all the different apis sort of attached here right so once we've got that key that's like our you know that unlocks access to everything so what i would say at this point is go to your your code go to your sort of the app.js level and hit plus and we need to store this key in something called an environment file now by default this is getting put into github for some stupid reason so you want to go ahead and add this to your github ignore file so that way it doesn't get committed you want this to be private you don't want to push this to github okay so you add this to the git ignore file now once that's done we're going to go ahead and actually add it over here so inside of your environment file what you want to do is have your something called google maps key equals 
And then this should be your super secret key. So super secret key, right? Something like, you know, that's gonna be the one that you copy and paste, right? You're gonna paste that here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop mine in inside of here and then I'm gonna hide it so that way it works for me. So I'm gonna pop this on my screen right now. And there we go. So I've just added mine in. And then I'm gonna close my environment file. So I've just done that exact thing and you don't add the little air quotes, right? You just add the, the value in itself straight away. Okay, so now I've got my environment key working. Okay, so my environment key is inside my environment, but in order to use environment keys, and these are very handy by the way, because you can actually have a production environment key when you deploy your test development key and all that stuff. I'm not gonna get too far into environment variables at this point, but what we're gonna do uh, is go ahead and check this out. So um, we're gonna create, we have, we have to actually load something called dot .nv, right? So it's actually a, far, uh, a nice little package called uh, react native dot env, right? And this allows us to use environment files inside of our uh, application. So I'm gonna do command J and I'm gonna do the following. Yarn add react native dot env, okay? And it doesn't just magically work. Environment files are very easy to use in things like, you know, React and normal, sort of create React app and Next.js. When using React Native, you need to do a little bit of configuration. It's not that hard, don't worry. All you need to do is go into your Babel or Babel, however, how do you guys say it? Babel.config. Frank Fernandez says, yo, Sonny, I'm late to the challenge, but I'm gonna finish it for sure. Thank you for your contribution to the community. Appreciate you, Frank. Thanks for tuning in, dude. I'm nearly at 1.5K likes. Let's keep going strong, guys. All right, so. Here we've got babelconfig.js. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my babelconfig and we need to add a few things over here, okay? So where we have presets, we actually need to add something in called plugins, right? So there's actually gonna be plugins and it's gonna be an array. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it in here and show you exactly, and I'll put it on the screen right now so you can see it, right? So plugins is an array. We've got an inside array there. And then we've got the this right here. So you can literally copy this out as you're doing it, right? And what this is doing is it loads in React Native .env, so into that bundler, right? Because what we need to do is we need to bundle those environment variables into our apps. That way, when it gets built, the environment variables are there to use. Remember, environment variables are there for sensitive information, right? You to go in there, right? So at this point, you've got the module name, and this is actually pretty cool. This allows us to just kind of have, uh, when we do an import, rather than having some really weird kind of from React Native .env, we can just say from, at env, and it was kind of nice. And this is the path to the environment file. Okay, hit save. Now what we might need to do, I don't know if that works out of the box, but maybe we can get a go, right? So that's pretty much done now. Now it will load in, okay? So now this will load in, okay? So at this point, we're gonna go back and go to app.js, okay? So it's looking pretty good. So at this point, what we're gonna do is go over here and we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the build. So we have our key and we're gonna use that Google Places autocomplete to go ahead and get that nice functionality, All right? So Google Places, where has it gone? Um, da, da, da. I'm gonna close my credentials tab because we've already done with that stuff. So the next thing that I wanna do is inside of my home screen, I'm gonna add in the React Native Google Places autocomplete functionality. So. This was actually this one right here. Remember that gave us that nice little autocomplete. All right, so we're back here. Let's carry on now. So I need to import this as follows, right? So for, to get this working. So I go into my home screen, import it at the top, and we have Google Places autocomplete from there, okay? Now, if I want my key, how do I get my key? I go ahead and I say import the Google Maps API key from that environment file. And that's what we used. We used Babel config to go ahead and set this up. So. You see, there's a lot of like kind of, you know, threading the needle in kind of in, in the right place to kind of get everything set up. But once it's working, it's pretty simple, right? So you just need to go ahead and take your time to get it right. Everyone should have a water break. I'm sipping today. The bladder kind of come, gives up on me a little bit. Redux gives you like global variables in the map. Yes, that's a very good way of doing it, Jackass. So, uh, sorry, I didn't pronounce that right. All right. Um, <laughs> it's never too late life to have a sunny adventure. There you go. All right, so import the key like so. And then what I wanna do is I wanna have the Google Places autocomplete, you know, component inside map. So you see, it takes a bunch of things here. The key itself, you know, all this other stuff, on press, what happens, blah, blah, blah. 
you know, do you want to fetch the details and all this other stuff? So I'm actually going to show you how we're going to get it to work in the way that we need to get it working, right? So underneath our image tag, above the nav options, I want to have that being rendered out, okay? So I'm going to say render Google Places auto complete. It's a self-closing component and a few things are going to happen here, right? So the Places API that we're going to use is called Google Places, right? Search. You need to add that in. So Google Places Search, and this allows us to search for the different places in Google's kind of directory, the scholar. And then the thing is, when I type into this input field, I don't want to search on every single type. So I'm going to use something called a debounce. So they can have a nice little functionality called debounce. And this means that imagine you're typing only after you stop typing for 400 milliseconds will it execute a search. That's going to you know be a lot more generous. So you always want to have a debounce in these sort of circumstances. Okay, it looks pretty good. At this point, I'm going to have a placeholder as well. And this is going to say where from. Okay, hit save. Probably going to error out at this point. So it says at env cannot be found in your project. Okay, so we already, you know, we set up Babel. But what we need to do is when we do that, we actually need to restart our sort of, you know, our compiler. So at this point, I'm going to do uh, i to open on iOS. I think we may need to actually restart it properly. But let's see what happens. Unable to resolve the module. Okay, that's fine. So at this point, what we need to do is cut off our server because whenever you add something at that level you have to restart your server right expo start and then we're probably going to get chrome eat us up right now so brace yourselves guys brace yourself right. it's, it's, it's so unforgiving right but it's gonna it's gonna cause me to lag a little bit chrome oh god my cpu just takes a hit when it opens right so now it's gonna head and load it up and then when we've done that already i'm gonna do i to open on ios don't worry, this will go away in a sec. If it doesn't, then we just need to set up a few more things. We just need to double check what's going on. Opening on iOS. Okay. And then I need to do R. So it says new update available downloading. So now it will rebuild the bundle because we added something into that Barbell bundle. Okay. So just bear with it. Do R to refresh. Okay. So I mean, we're still getting this issue. Uh, da, da, da. So we need to actually do a little step here then in that case let's go ahead and check out what's happening so let's do uh reader react native dot env and let's just go through this up again i think i might have missed something react native dot env we've done the install we've added this in we've done all of this stuff that's fine in safe mode you have, we've done that already deprecated wire blah 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 okay so in this case whenever you have this issue just go ahead and do a few little run through steps do an npm install or a yarn to go ahead and make sure everything's up to scratch again and in this case yarn start reset cache so this this is a problem with our cache right this is where we've kind of you know there's something wrong with the cache and it's causing this issue to happen what i would recommend here is to go ahead and completely close your simulator and let's go ahead and give that a try now we'll figure it out, don't worry. So we'll open up the simulator as well. And I'm going to do open a new device, iOS, iPhone 12 Pro Max. And then we're going to reboot our phone. We can do these steps, you know, you can delete your node modules, run your uninstall and all that stuff. But it's going to take a while. I don't really want to do that every time. Let's give it a sec. This is all because we made a big change to our bubble config, which is fine. You know, we were prepared for that. Um, we just need to uh, quickly get over this issue and then we're good to go. And I'm, I'm going to check my Bible config to make sure I make the, made the correct changes. Okay. I'm going to copy in my config and see if there's any differences here. So I'm going to go ahead and check. Okay, we're good. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go here and I'm going to go ahead and say open on iOS and we still get this issue. Okay. So not a problem. We can fix this. We're gonna go ahead and this is what I like, you know, you guys get into debugging situations with me. It's natural, it's normal. Okay, so Bible Preset Expo, React Native .m. Oh, all good. Let's see if it still finds it. Okay, we still got this issue. So delete the no modules and run. Okay, so when this happens, there's a few things you can do, right? What I would say to do is try this one first. So you do rm dash rf node modules. Okay, so node modules. And what this will do is it will delete all of your node modules in your directory, right? So this will actually get rid of all my node modules, which has like a full clean out, a full sweep, right? Um, and then we need to reinstall our node modules. So that's gonna take a minute, right? So we're gonna give this a little bit of a second and then we're gonna go ahead and figure this one out. Okay, 
and then once we've done that we can go ahead and come back and you know figure this one out again so right now this is deleting our node modules folder from our project you just got to be patient with it okay so the m file has to exist we've already done this uh, undefined we've already done that as well So it's annoying right now we just have oh oops i already messed uh okay i actually messed that one up should have just done this should have done that yarn star or oh, expo damn it that's the one i needed expo r dash c okay that was a silly mistake of mine but instead we're going to do yarn to re reinstall all of our node modules this is a debugging step okay it's okay to do it delete an environment file no you don't have to do that that's not the the solution for it all right so we're just downloading our sort of environment files again we need to start expo again but with dash c that was it so you get rid of your cache okay <laughs> thankfully no modules is super small yeah ryan hell yeah it's so small dude <laughs> that's, why we're, that's why we're here for twenty three thousand seven hundred sixty one files all right and trust me guys once this is done we move pretty quick right so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up the auto auto complete we've already set up redux which is actually you know one of the big things that we need to do now it's going to be quite a smooth transition the next step would be to go ahead and incorporate the maps a bunch of ui elements and then we go ahead and pull data from different places push it in the way that we need to to get an uber experience built out so if you're excited for this smash your thumbs up we are nearly at 1.5k likes support has and the energy today has been incredible and while we're waiting go ahead and sign up first link in the description to the airbnb challenge and the second link is for if you need a refresher on your react basics okay so make sure take advantage of it it's absolutely free and i would not say it if i didn't mean it like it's helped out a lot of people it will help you out too okay where is the fiber internet fundraising you know it is it's because of the house right we don't actually have bloody fiber here this house otherwise i would have you know a gigabit speeds if i could right i'd pay uh, however much they wanted for that okay so we've got this up and running we've got the dot env file for this okay cool and then once that's done what well, i'm actually i'm going to stop running my my server right now okay and this is one of those things you know don't freak out don't don't get scared when this isn't working you know just go ahead and take your time with it it's, it's very easy to you know when things don't work to be like oh my god i'm not i'm not a developer i'm yeah freak out and it's okay it's all good don't worry. right in the meantime let's go ahead and have a look at some things let's go ahead and look at react native maps this is what we're going to be using so react native maps this one right here and it's quite a nice little component right so we need to go ahead and install this afterwards and then you can see you, you can pass in a bunch of things and this will actually load out the different maps whether on ios it would be apple maps on android it will be google maps so here you go okay uber clone done and um, we've already done so now we go back here and we need to do expo and what was the command again it was expo dash expo r dash c right so let's do that expo r dash c right and this is kind of restarting expo i guess okay so it's going to start up expo with zero cache so this should fix our caching issues which should force the environment file to load we should fix our issue okay uh it works on my local as well which is a bit annoying so it's all good we'll figure this one out all right uh manish says my first session works loving it thank you oh god chrome brace yourselves all right i think there should be a meme on this every time chrome comes in the attack on the computer all right there we go nice so at this point we've got this up and running i'm gonna do i to open it on ios ignore this for now this is a dead screen this is old okay and then dismiss that right now and it says opening on ios opening on iphone 12 pro max and then if all went well then you've just seen a live debugging fix for what we were doing i hope it does because otherwise it's gonna be super annoying mm, evan says keep on you got this exactly dude I don't know why I said that American accent. I just got like an American vibe off that. New update available, downloading. Okay. Interesting. Building JavaScript bundle. Okay, we're getting progress. All right, and it's building out the bundle. Okay, so let's do let, let it do its thing. And in the meantime, we've got React Native Maps over here. So like I said before, we're going to be setting this up. And you can even have markers on this. That's how we do like point A, point B. And all of that stuff happening right game alex says first live session love it that's what i'm talking about amazing stuff ps says nice code that's what i'm talking about dude that's what we try and keep the standards quite high here so it's building out the bundle and yeah let's just be patient with it 
as I mentioned before, guys, we've done all the heavy lifting at this point. So now it's actually quite a smooth build process, believe it or not. We've got quite a lot of like interactivity, a lot of kind of, you know, cool things to look forward to right now. We're going to be building the sort of autocomplete functionality. Then we're going to be having destinations. So how do we get from point A to point B? Right? And we're going to do all of this fairly quick, I think. Right? It's going to be pretty fun once we get moving with this. And then once that's done, we're actually going to have, you know, the calculating the travel time and then passing all that information, rendering it on the screen. And I've got a nice little calculation to figure out how much your ride should cost. OK, so 98 percent done. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, Jacob Fry, we're using Tailwind, dude. Awesome. OK, nice. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Ah, oh. <laughs> the demo goes to being nice to me today. It's not bad. Uh, Leandre DP says, let's go, Sonny. You're a real inspiration. Thanks for all you do. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much for tuning in. Almost at 1.5K likes. Let's go, guys. And if you haven't already, remember, subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. And hit the first link in the description. Sign up to the Airbnb challenge. It's going to be sick. It's going to be this level of energy for five days straight with me. And I've got an ebook that I'm giving you to for free just for being a part of the team. All right. Okay, we've done this crazy environment crap, right? So now we've got the environments, uh, uh, navigation stuff working, cool. So now we're gonna carry on with that autocomplete stuff, right? So we went ahead and popped in Google Places autocomplete. So right now it's not showing, right? So obviously we need to go ahead and fix that. So what I'm gonna have instead is on the home screen, we've got some styles that we need to apply, right? So I'm actually going to do some inline styling here. Again, it's no rule, right? You can you can use whatever styles you want to do. Class, make it into a class if you want. I'm going to add a container style here. And the reason is, is because the classes that they have, you can override them, all right? So the, the part that I want to override here is flex zero. And you just need to do these to get it on the screen, right? Trust me, I've tried it a lot. I've done a lot of few things, right? So it works. And then you can see text input. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And you see how it comes up and you say font size is 18. I want to make it slightly bigger. There we go. Okay. So right now, if I type in, nothing's really happening. Okay. So the reason why is because we haven't passed our key through. It has no idea how to query Google. So in this case, I'm going to add a query attribute. And here I'm going to pass an object in. Now for the key, I'm going to pass the Google Places key. Okay. So Google Maps API key. Uh, there we go. Import my Google Maps API key. And what I'm going to do is comma. And this one, I'm going to say language is EN for English, right? And obviously you can do different languages or, you know, add internationalization to the app. Uh, Casio says, you're my hero. Amazing stuff, dude. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, man. All right. So I'm going to hit save. Okay. Now at this point, right, we should actually have, you know, if I type in, let's just type in London. Ooh, that's sick. 1.5K likes as well. Clutch timing. I tell you, man. Honestly, that's so sick. Look at that, guys. We just got our first kind of, you know, interactivity element where you've got, you know, like if I type in, let's just say uh, Germany. Boom, look, loads of stuff in Germany. I mean, you get some Texas stuff happening there as well. But Germany, PSA, all right. I mean, let's just type in like, uh, let's say uh, da, 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 Scotland. There you go. Scotland, Road, Liverpool. Okay, you've got loads of different places. Point is, it works, right? It looks sick works and it works just as I wanted it. So at this point, I'm going to do the minimum length should be two. So you should add two different things because, you know, you might have UK. I don't know. Or you might have that. Right. And then you see right now it says powered by Google. I don't actually want it to say powered by Google so I can get rid of that. I can say enable powered by container is false. And now it gets rid of the enable by. Right. So that way it kind of, you know, white brands it, I guess. Right. So that kind of makes it a little bit nicer. <clears throat> Guys, you're killing it today. Absolute crazy energy. Okay. So at this point, enable power by container is out. And then by the way, you know, when I kind of press this, okay, we actually do fetch some information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on press. And what this gives me back is an arrow function, right? And then it gives me a few details with it. The first one is data. The second one is details. Now we need to protect ourselves here and say that details is by default no unless we say fetch details, which we are going to do here. The details include things like, you know, geometry locations. This includes things like the coordinates. Now the coordinates are crucial because I'm going to be storing those coordinates 
rendering it on a map afterwards. And again, where do we store it? We dispatch an action, which goes into the data layer, AKA Redux. And then we use a selector, which we set up earlier as well, to pull the information from the data layer, AKA Redux, use it in the component, okay? So looks sick, we've got the here happening. So now what I wanna do is just to prove to you that we get some stuff back. I'm gonna console log data, and I'm gonna console log details. And now if I click save and I open up command J, and I go ahead and just go, let's just pop in something like uh, da, 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 London, London Bridge, click it. And now you can see, look, we get a console log and you see all of these things, like one of the best places in the world, a beautiful bridge at River Thames. So this all comes from the details API that comes back from Google, right? Now, if we go all the way back up, uh, you should see the first thing that we got logged out was data. So we've got a bunch of information here, right? Now, if you look into this, you can see there's loads of things. I've saved you a bunch of this effort and I'll tell you what to get out of here but there's loads of things that we might want. Example, geometry, location, longitude, latitude. So that's what we're actually gonna be using to kind of get what we want out of this, right? So let's go ahead and get this done. Uh, Mohammed says, keep going. That's what I'm talking about. This is a good way of learning a React Native. Yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. So, okay, we've got the information coming through from an API now, right? This is coming from Google Places API. Now, what we wanna do is, I'm also gonna add this a little bit, of, it's kind of this nice little functionality where if you enter the return key, you go ahead and get the search, right? So I'm gonna do that as well. So if you hit the return key on the keyboard, and by the way, if you wanna bring up the keyboard, Command K brings up a keyboard sort of on the emulator, right? It helps you sort of figure things out, okay? So when we press the, uh, the, 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 when we press the option, that, like, you know, London Bridge, whatever, I want to now set the origin to the location that I press, okay? So we already went and set up the data layer when we first started, right? When we first started, we set up the data layer. So what I'm actually going to do here is get a few things to actually push information into the data layer. So in order to do that, I need something called a dispatch action or a dispatch sort of variable now the dispatch is remember we have actions which allow us to like change the data in the data lab but we need to dispatch the action so to me the way i like to think of it is dispatch is like a gun we shoot the action into the data layer with the payload which has the information that we want to change you know or manipulate in the data layer in this case to get the dispatch we say const dispatch equals use dispatch and then we import it from react redux okay so that gives us our dispatch, you know, variable. And then with the dispatch variable, we can go ahead and we also need to import something here. So I actually am gonna import the set destination and set origin actions from our nav slice slices, okay? So this is actually gonna be very, very helpful for us in getting this working the way we need to, okay? Um, Rizwan says these sessions are much better than Udemy courses. That's my goal, dude. I, I, I'm not a fan of Udemy, I prefer to do this kind of teaching, okay? So at this point, what well, the way we sort of push data into the you know Redux store is we say dispatch, and then we push the action in. So in this case, the action is set origin, and the payload, so in this case, you can see it says action creator with payload, right? So we pass the parentheses, and the argument that we give in is an object, and the object here, we can define however we want, right? So I'm gonna store two things inside of this object for the origin, the location, and the location is gonna be a set of, uh, you know, there's gonna be some information from the API response, so that long API response, geometry.location, right? So what I'm actually gonna do is it's gonna be details.geometry.location. And what this will do is it will give me an object with the latitude and longitude, and we're gonna store that inside of the Redux store. So that way when I'm down the line and I go ahead and use, you know, um, Joan Pablo, thank you so much. Yeah, whenever I go ahead and, uh, access it down the line in a different component on the map component, I have access to it, okay? So here I'm gonna say description is the second one, and this is gonna be like some text, which kind of helps me show on the screen or you know whatever it is where I'm searching, right? So in this case, if I type in London, UK, I wanna store that somewhere, AKA the description. So here I'll say data.description, okay? So this is the information that I wanna keep from the response. The second thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that you the destination is null. Okay, so by default it is no, but imagine if I go back and forth between the screens, I just wanna make sure that I dispatch and I see set destination as no. Okay, so set destination as no. Okay, this is looking pretty good right now. Okay, so we're gonna set the origin, set the destination at this point. So we test it, right? So we make sure it's refreshed. We do London, UK, 
Get yeah, right. Okay, so nav set, set origin is not a function. Okay, interesting. So we've actually messed something up here. We do dispatch set origin, and it says nav slice is not a function. Um, okay, so we we need to fix something here. We've got set origin, set destination, and I'm importing this from here. Slice is nav slice, and in that in nav slice, let's go over to nav slice. Let's just double check set origin is a function from our reducer that we are going ahead and exporting i'm just going to double check that i've actually coded this up right by the way um so there we go let me just double check what the, what changed there nothing changed to that no okay we're all good um if i go ahead and do this and we go back let's just try this out one more time let's do london bridge okay so it was just a refresh that we needed to do everything was actually pretty good uh, as, as we saw it so Let's go back to our, sometimes in React Native, it can be a bit kind of, you know, intimate, it can be a bit weird to be honest in React Native. So I'd recommend sometimes just do a, a proper refresh, do a reload of your app and see if the problem still exists. Now, if I click get a ride, okay. So this is now actually storing in Redux, right? So if I do London, UK, it's actually storing the information in Redux. The next thing I need to do, right, is actually on the get a ride screen is render out a map. So if you're excited for the map start part, smash the like button subscribe as always and sign up to the airbnb challenge first link in the description and we're going to go ahead and set up the map now okay so we're going to go over to the map screen so we've already got the origin information set up as we needed it so the second step is the map screen okay this is where the map stuff goes basically all right so for the map screen a few different things um we're actually going to have um we have a view and then we have a an actual map Okay, so you see when we render this map, it's gonna be half the screen. So this is gonna be half the screen over here. And then the other portion where we've got all the details, it's gonna be another view. So what I'm actually gonna to do to prepare everything here is I'm gonna have two views. I'm gonna have one view and I can use Emmet here. I can say view and I'm gonna have another view. These are like two divs. Now for, the, for each view, I'm gonna give it a tailwind property of basically it's gonna say height of one half. So it will take up one half of the screen each. Tailwind, and we're gonna say height of half of the screen. And this will give each of them an equal distribution across the screen. We do need to import Tailwind, so I forgot to do that, my bad. Don't hate on me, React Native compiler. All right, so save. Okay, and then, and also, yeah, happy Friday, everyone. Yes, I hope you had a good week, guys. I'm definitely having a good week this way. So now we've got this and then let's just load up that screen. So get a ride. Okay, we're on the screen, cool. And then you can do safe area view, but we're not gonna need it because I actually want the map to kind of push into the dangerous area. So that's why I don't want to have the safe area view. And then for the map, let's start with the map, right? So I'm gonna create an actual component for the map. So we've got all the logic separate. So I'm gonna say map.js, R-N-F-E-S, React Native Functional Export with start sheet, okay? And here I say, I am a map. Okay, whoa. Andy B, super chat, $2 donation. Thank you so much, man. Mailman, delivery and wish me luck at my interview. Dude, good luck at that interview. I love when you comment, man. You know, I'm going to call Sonny the mailman because he always delivers. That's awesome, dude. Thank you so much for tuning in and good luck, man. Jones says, greetings from Kenya. Awesome stuff. My dad was from Kenya. Okay, so this is pretty cool. We've got this working. So a map. So on the map screen, I'm going to have in the first view, I'm going to render out the map, right? And then here I'm going to go ahead and render the component for the map. So we do this and you can see I am a map. It's hidden up there. Let's get rid of the hiss. I am the map text. Okay. But the map, right? So it says I'm a map over in that dangerous zone. So how do we actually get this thing looking kind of nice, right? So what I want to do now is have a map view and that comes from React Native Maps. Now I showed you before previously how to get that kind of up. So let's go ahead and see where is it gone? Uh, yeah, so here, React Native Maps, right? So it's a GitHub repo, awesome repo. And let's go ahead and import this, install it firstly. So we're gonna go ahead and do yarn add React Native Maps, right? So when it doesn't tell you, you just do that. Um, you need to install that. So yarn add React Native Maps, like so. Hit enter. And then once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and import map view from React Native Maps. Let me know what's your favorite part of the build right now. Import map view from React Native Maps. Let me know. 
and quick water break as well because again lips are getting dry dude 16 nearly at 1600 likes and guys we're almost at 70,000 subscribers that is insane right do this Codex Buff says, I've been following you from the first few list. Oh, nice. Learn a lot, but I'm working full-time at Tech Stop in Nigeria with a juicy pet. That's sick, man. Well done. Okay, we installed the React Native Maps. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually have the map view rendered on the screen. So, I mean, let's go ahead and copy this example here and just see what comes out, right? Uh, and then that way you get some indicator of what's actually on the screen. So, I'm going to go ahead and simply pop on the actual map view as our entire component. So, map view. Cannot render map view. Where the hell is it? is basically what it's saying to me. I'm going to import that and the marker because eventually I want to have that little dot, like pin that kind of drops on the screen. So hit save. Let's go over here. And we don't see anything. Now, the reason why we don't see anything is because we need to give it a bit of style, right? So we need to go ahead and say style equals, and I'm just going to give it a tailwind style of flex one. So it's going to use up as much room as it can, flex one. And it's already in a half container, which means it should use up half the screen. I always forget to import my tailwind, but let's fix that right now. Right. Let's go over here, chuck it down here, save, get a ride. Boom. San Francisco, baby. Look at that. Sick. That looks awesome, man. Look at that. Look at that. Ah, smash the thumbs up if that's cool. All right. So at this point, this is looking kind of nice, right? And um, we're going to have now uh, sort of, so you can imagine where we're going with this. Eventually the origin will get pulled through here and show all that stuff out. I'll show you how it all works. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I want to actually have it so that when you click get a ride, it shows my origin. That's the first thing, right? So if imagine if I have London, UK, click get a ride. It should show London here, All right? Ricardo Oliveira, thank you so much for a five euro donation. You're doing a great job, bro. I'm really grateful for everything I've learned from you. Best regards from Portugal. I love how we're international. Thank you, dude. Appreciate you so much for that donation. You know, guys, I'm going to have a nice sushi tonight. I'm telling you. Uh, but thank you so much, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And this makes me honestly keep bringing more and more value. So I really do respect you guys for doing this. Right now, I'm gonna, I, right now it's very busy, the map. It's got loads of different things which aren't really useful when we're kind of, you know, having navigation. So you can change an attribute called map type to muted standard. And you see how it strips the map down? I personally think that's way more better when you're doing this because uh, it's, you know, when you've got navigation, all you want to see is the actual navigation. So that would be my advice here, right? So, uh, da, 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 da. let's continue on. So we've got the style we've done there. Okay. Nice. So the next thing we want to do now is actually have the, let's have the, the location pop up here. So how do I pull in my, remember if I pushed information into the data layer, how do I pull it? All right. So first thing I want to do is say const origin equals use selector which is how I pull something from the selector. Remember we created all those selectors in the nav slice at the bottom, right? So I'm gonna close that, nav slice, select origin. So I'm gonna use that here and say, use selector, select origin. And what that does is that in, its, in essence is actually gonna go ahead and go into the state nav and give me the origin. So whatever the value of the origin is in the global store, it'll give me that. And that will get pulled through here. Now remember that was an object that I set it to. So for the initial region here, I'm actually gonna do something pretty cool. I'm gonna say origin dot location, dot latitude okay and here i'll say origin dot origin dot location dot long okay hit save now it should okay there you go it's london now right now for the delta and longitude delta this can be extremely confusing when you're starting off right so i'm not going to go too much into what a delta is but for now i'm going to i've actually implemented a very nice way so typically we set this to this if we want to have you know a street level kind of distance Right now, this is the only time you're going to have to modify that value. And then afterwards, I promise you it'll be easier. OK, so I'll show you a different little trick to get around the delta. So you don't want to have to calculate your deltas. It's annoying. It's a headache. What the hell is even a delta? It took me ages to figure out. But um, that I've got a nice little solution around that that will help you out. And it will fix so much headache and time for you. OK, so right now, if I go back and I type in, let's just type in uh, Scotland. OK, Scotland, UK, get a ride. And now you see it's taking me to Scotland, I guess. Where's this? Let's, let's type in something like LA. Let's do Los Angeles. Los Angeles, California, USA. Get a ride. Los Angeles. So we're somewhere in LA right now. See that? 
Nice. Awesome. And let's actually do somewhere a bit more kind of, you know, identifiable. So let's do London Bridge. London Bridge. Luke, UK. Get a ride. London Bridge. Nice. That's awesome, right? Whoa, Beto Cusada. Super chat. 20 Mexican dollars. Keep up the good work, bro. Greetings from Mexico. I love this, guys. Thank you so much. This is just it's crazy. Honestly, I, I can't get over it. Thank you so much, guys. Nearly at 1.6k likes. Let's continue on. So the first thing I want to do is actually drop a marker as well on that bridge, right? So what I'm going to do here is underneath the map view, I'm actually going to firstly make the map view no longer a self-contained component. So it's actually going to have a children. So I'm going to make it a actual parent component. And then inside the map view, we can put other things like, for example, a marker. Now, I only want to render this little kind of pin if the origin is there. OK, um, so at this point, what I want to do is I want to say origin and this may be undefined. So I want to protect myself by saying it's optional, which means that it could be there. But if it's not there, don't freak out. Don't break. Basically, it's called optional chaining. And I'll say if we have the origin location, then I want to render out a marker component. So I'm going to render out a marker and we did import that earlier on. This is a self a self enclosed component. And this marker, what I want to do is I'm going to give it a coordinate, right? The coordinate for this marker is going to be the latitude and longitude from the origin. So very similar to what we did earlier. Okay. And there you can see, we get a little pin drop, right? Awesome stuff. And also if you want to look at that, look around, you can hold option and kind of zoom in around. And this does actually support zooming in and out of your app as well, which is awesome. Right. So you see, we've got a little pin drop. Now, what I can do is I can give it a title, description and identifier. Right. So what I'm actually going to do here is pop in a title, a description and an identifier and hit save. And now if I click it, origin, London Bridge, London, UK. So you can say like your starting point, you can change that to whatever you want. Right. Uh, live location I didn't include because I didn't want to have my live, live location pop up. But you can easily kind of implement that if you follow the documentation. Um, but yeah, so this gives you a very nice little starting point for that. But say we did something like, um, give me a, give me a location guys. Let's do something like a uh, Facebook headquarters, Facebook, I don't know, headquarters. Yeah. Facebook, I don't know, DC headquarters street North. So it found somewhere and I guess that's where Facebook headquarters is. Yeah. Look, so it's got some kind of, I guess, Facebook's there, I guess. All right. But it works. All right. So at this point, what we're going to do is we are in <laughs> everything in India. All right. So I want to actually kind of hide these options, by the way, as well, if you don't enter the origin. So how do we do that as well? So I'm going to go to my nav options and I'm actually just going to upgrade this a little bit. So that way, if you have, you know, if you haven't filled out your details, there, it's not going to actually be it's not going to be clickable because we don't want to go to the map screen if you haven't got our origin. So the way that I do that is I say touchable opacity is disabled if there is no origin. And because we're trying to access origin, I need to pull the origin in with a selector. So I say const origin equals use selector from select the origin. All right. So that's how you always pull information. But once you get used to that pattern, relatively simple. Now it looks the same, right? So the way that you get it to look a bit different is you can go ahead and say for the view, I'm actually going to keep this one pretty simple. I'm going to say the style of the view here. So the container that you see over there, this view style is going to be tailwind. So we're going to pop in some tailwind. Did I import it? Yes, I did. And then I'm going to say, okay, only actually apply this tailwind. So I'm going to put in a print, uh, you know, JSX little tag. And I'm going to say, if there is no origin, then I want to render out opacity 20, right? So now if you see, it says no origin, then we should be rendering out blah, blah, blah. Okay. So if I, my app's just not restored. So let me go back here and do R to refresh our app and let's see now. Okay. There we go. So now it's only going to, you know, show me something if I go ahead and pop in an orange. So as soon as I hit London, then it becomes a clickable button. Then I can click it. Then I get London. So that's how we can pretty much go ahead and do it. Right. So that's going to help you out a hell of a lot. Um, oh, wow. You've got loads of people. Rotterdam Way, Merlot Park, Warsaw. Right now. I'll tell you what, I'll do someone. Let me go ahead and pick uh, One Hacker Way. Right, let's go ahead and do One Hacker Way. One Hacker Way. Oh, look, Menlo Park. 
And wait for it. There we go. Facebook's building. Look at that, guys. I hope that I hope smash that thumbs up. Right. That works, you know. Um, so all the timestamps, by the way, will be in the description after this video goes up. Right, we chuck it on there straight away afterwards. So within you know a couple of hours, they'll be up, and you guys can get free, you know, complete access to this video. It's gonna help you out a lot when you're watching this back. Okay, so at this point, we're it's looking very good. So now we need to implement the bottom section. Okay, so we're gonna go back and over to our map screen, and we need to go ahead and continue on with the rest of this. So. I mean, let's actually head over to our map firstly and see if we need to do anything else over there for now. So I'm going to hide that one J to hide. Now over at the map screen right now, I think we're pretty good so far. Okay, we're pretty good at this point so far. We need to build the bottom section now. So going back to map screen, the second view. So the second half, you see Tailwind half. This is what we're going to be doing next. The map screen. Okay. So for the map screen, this one's kind of cool, right? So you know how we have a stack navigator here. You can actually have a nested stack navigator, which could be the size of this area here, which can have its own sort of swipeable stack. Now remember, as I mentioned before, swipeables pretty much be, you know, you can stack forward, like not, I mean, back and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, this, this should help you out quite a lot, right? So at this point, oh, nice Cameroon in the house. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to uh, the bottom and I'm actually going to create a new stack navigator. Okay, so for the map screen I'm actually going to go ahead and say const stack equals create stack navigator This is gonna be an in like a sort of I guess it's a lower level stack navigator, right? So we've got the main one in app.js, you know this stack navigator So similar principle and now we have one in our map screen Okay, and what we're gonna do is this is gonna live inside of here so stack dot navigator right so we're gonna have a stack navigator and then we're gonna have two screens that we're gonna render here the first one is gonna be the navigate card and this is gonna say where do you want to go to right and then basically when you click you know you enter your options blah 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 it will go to the next screen which will say ride options card and that's gonna be the one that you know uber x uber xl uber lux and all those things okay so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go ahead and do stack screen so let's go ahead and do stack screen and we've got navigate card and navigate card component, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm going to create a navigate card component to prepare later on. So navigate card.js, React Native Functional Exported Component with style sheet, and say yo. And then hit save and go back. Go back to our map screen and import the navigate card component. So uh, to import that, I just need to do the following. So I don't actually need that there. I'm going to say import from and it's not going to be the map it's going to be uh navigate card navigate card there we go okay and now we see yo right so you see how we got yo nice we're gonna have another screen which is going to be for ride options card and that's going to be the one where we pick the ride you know like uber x uber xl uber lux and all that stuff so i'm going to go to my ride options card component over here which i'm going to create dot js and again, React Native functional export with the style sheet. There we go. And I'm going to say, pick a ride, pick a ride. Right? Okay, awesome. So at this point, it may not be clear as to, okay, how the hell is actually doing anything or working, right? So firstly, we need to fix this and have an import for the ride option. So I'm going to go here and do ride options card. Save. And then you see if we go to, let's just say London, UK, get a ride, we're in London. Yo, and now we can actually have a navigate and the navigate here would go through to the next area on this screen. Okay. So at this point, what we're going to do is, um, nice. What's up guys? We've got so many new people tuning in. Make sure you hit subscribe. If you're enjoying this content, it's going to absolutely be coming more and more often, literally one like away from 1.6 likes. Who's going to break it? I wonder who's going to break it. Oh, there we go. 1.6. Actually went straight to 1.6, uh, 1,601. But thank you so much, guys. That's so sick. Absolutely crushing it today. Um, oh, wow. Make sure you're subscribed, right? If you're not subscribed and you're one of those likers, please just hit the subscribe, grow the channel, right? It's uh, such an amazing vibe from you guys, right? So what we're going to do now is build out the actual navigate card, okay? So the navigate card... We're actually going to go ahead and set a few things up here. So firstly, 
I want it to be the safe area of you because what can happen here is you see underneath here, you don't want it to go into this dangerous area as well. You kind of want it to be above that at all times. So you don't want to kind of break that zone. So here I'm going to do safe area of you and I need to go ahead and import my safe area of you like so. And you see, it doesn't look much different here because it's not touching the bottom, but it will prevent it from da damaging the bottom. Okay. Now this is actually a gray background. So we're going to go ahead and change that. Right. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Frank. He says, I really wish the best for your channel. It's really invaluable. Thank you again, man. Thank you so much, dude, for tuning in. It's people like you that make this possible. So I appreciate every single one of you. All right. So we're going to add a style here. And this style is going to have a background color of white. So you can do it two ways, right? You can do background color of white and all that stuff. Uh, so I'll show you. Usually you could do tailwind and you can do flex one BG white, right? So I mean, in fact, we could just do that. Let's just do that. Let's go ahead and pop this here. Tailwind. Let's go ahead and pop it here. Tailwind dash dash. And we can say BG white. Oops, BG white flex one. And now you can see it's white all the way. If I do BG red 500, you see it's that bottom half. Right, so we're going to do BG white flex one. So it should take up as much room as it can. The second thing I want to do is I want to say good morning, Sonny. Right, so you know, like on Uber, it says good morning. Now, obviously, we're not we not got login and things like that in our app right now. But you can upgrade this app after you're done. You know, share it on your stories. By the way, if you're watching this and you are enjoying it, make sure you shoot an Instagram story and say I was watching and you know everything else. My Instagram handle is on the bottom. It's s s s s sanga. Right, so you see it right there on the Instagram tag. But make sure you do that because I love it when you guys, you know, shout out and, and see. I can see you guys who is actually watching behind this video. It's awesome to see. We're going to have Good Morning Sunny here. And I'm going to say, you know, and you can have your name there to make it cool for you. Text center. So I want to center the text. So you see it gets centered. Padding from the Y, so top and bottom of five. And the text should be extra large. So text should be XL. There you go. Looks really nice already. Right. Um, Carter says we share the code. The code is available on the Papa GitHub repo. I'm going to be pushing it straight after this. So it's all available over there. <laughs> if you want it, make sure you grab it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is add a view. Now, this view is going to be responsible for a few things. We're going to have a Google Places autocomplete here as well, similar to the one that we had at the top over there. And that's actually going to say where to. And that's going to be setting the destination. So very similar to previously. And then we're going to go ahead and have that. OK, so what I'm actually going to do now is for that view, I'm going to style it accordingly. So I'm going to add a bunch of styles in here. So let's go ahead and do style. I'm going to add a border top, border gray 200. So it's a border top for the view underneath gray 200 flex shrink. So it should be able to shrink as and when it needs to. And I'll show you why we need that later. OK, so inside of this view, we're going to have a another view which has the Google Places autocomplete inside of it. OK, so inside of here, I'm going to actually put in the Google Places autocomplete. So I need to import a few things to get ready for this. I need the Google Google Places autocomplete and I need Google Maps API key from our environment variable. OK, so let's go ahead and hit save on that. And then inside of here, we're going to do the same thing as we rendered before. Google Places autocomplete component like so. Self-closing component and let's go pop that in and Let's go ahead and start putting things in. So we're going to say placeholder equals where to. Right. So it's very similar to Uber's experience. You see where to. Right. Uh, the actual sort of let's go ahead and check this out. The actual wow, the likes are still going up. This is sick. Oh, my God. All right. So we're going to do the same thing. We have to specify which API. And we're also going to give a debounce of 400. Now, if you don't remember what the debounce does, it means as you're typing in, you don't want it to constantly be searching on every single one. You want it to be after 400 milliseconds of the user stop typing that it does it. What is happening? Oscar Bonelli, 50 Mexican dollar donation. I think it's pesos, right? I'm not sure. Um, thanks, Sonny, for your tutorials. It has helped us a lot to improve our React Native and ReactJS portfolios. That's sick, man. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate you. All right. So we've got this. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much, dude. So for the styles here, I'm going to show you how you can have, you know, like I showed you before, you can have tailwind styles or you can have you know your own styles and it's not so in this case i'm going to show you how we can have in this case we're just going to say input let's say the two input box styles so it's going to be the two sort of styles then we'll show you how we can do it in here as well All right so for the container override remember these have certain overriding fields that we can override to so the google places one for the container i'm going to do background color white padding top 20 and a flex of zero so hit save on that you can see 
that it's very hard to tell because the background is already white. And there's two more fields, text input and text input container. So if I do these, oh, it's actually, it's not even being applied right now because firstly, what I'm doing is I'm changing the background color to a slight kind of gray border radius, zero font 18, and then a bit of padding around the container. So I'm going to connect this here by saying, uh, all I need to do is say styles, oops, styles equals, there you go. So I've shown you inline styles, I've shown you style sheet styles, and I've showed you tailwind styles, right? So you've got all, you know, all the different ones as well. So I think that should help you guys out quite a lot in terms of, you know, that way you can use your flexibility and creative knowledge as to how you want to use them. Okay, let's keep going. Right, so the styles is two input box styles, awesome stuff. And then we've got the debounce. So now I'm gonna also add in the fetch details. Remember, we wanna fetch the additional details as well. I'm gonna disable the powered by container. So let's just test it out. Let's do London. And right now we don't see any results. And that's because we don't have the query. Remember the query? The query is where we put in our key and where we say what language we're gonna do. So Google Maps key goes in here. And now let's try it. Let's do London. Boom, now it has a key to go ahead and query your Google APIs for, okay? Um, so this hopefully, will, should, well, yeah, this should be fun for you right now, okay? So the next thing you wanna do is have a return key, which has, so when we hit the return key, it's gonna also have the search. Oh, that scared me. That scared me for a sec, the connection dipped. Oh, God. All right, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We're good. Connection dip for a second, we're all good. Let me know if your stream's still good. And I think we're all, all, all okay, all right? But right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we've got on press, okay? Um, let me just double check, all right? All right, we're good, yeah. Oh, no bloody, it scares me so much. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say on press, and we're gonna say, we've got a JSX function. And we're gonna say uh, arrow function, sorry. And this gives us two things, remember? It gives us the d data and details. So I'm gonna say data and, oops, data. It's just there's gonna be data and details. And remember, we need to protect ourselves by saying the default value is no. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now what we're gonna do is remember, we set the origin this first way, but we're also gonna go ahead and do the, um, someone said I paid you a thousand dollars. Whoa, really? Where? Crazy, dude. Um, I'm, I'm press. So at this point, I'm gonna say, dispatch and then set the destination, right? So we did it with the origin. I'm going to do the same thing for this, but in order to do that, I first need my dispatcher. So I say const dispatch, oops, not dispatch equals use dispatch import it from a React Redux. It's a hook that gives us the dispatch object. And then I'm also going to import my set destination um, action from our navigation slice. So set destination like so. And now what we do is we say dispatch the set destination with the payload that is something like the following. So remember before we did the location and the description. Location and the description, okay? So it looks really nice at this point, location and description. And uh, guys, the retention, by the way, is incredible. So I, I wanna thank you all for still being here, it's insane, right? Now, after I do that, I do wanna navigate, right? So I wanna navigate them to the next screen. Right. So at this point, after that, I need to go ahead and get my navigation uh, like sort of item. So I say navigation equals use navigation, import it from your navigation. And then after we actually select something, because the natural behavior is you basically put in a, you know, an address here. And then when you hit an, uh, like an item here, it should navigate you to pick a ride. Right. So here I should say something like navigation dot navigate. And the root name we gave it earlier was ride options card. Okay. And it's saying, whoa, 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 where is navigation? So that's because we need to go ahead and do that. No, wait, what's happening? So we've got a dispatch. That's why. And this right now is, oh yeah, my bad. That's why. Okay. So now let's try it. Let's do something like we go from London to, let's just say, uh, Scotland. And then wait for it. My something's not working for me. Scotland. Okay, so I'm going to refresh my app again. Don't freak out. Just do an, a refresh. Oh, request timeout. Oops. Okay. So hopefully I didn't kill my quota, but London. And let's just do something like Scotland. Oops, Scotland. UK. Okay. There you see it. Ah, 
it went ahead, pushed the destination into the Redux store, and then it pushed us over here. Now, if you want to go back, you see how we can do that. We can swipe back. Nice. So now we have the destination working. Right. So this is actually incredibly powerful. We're moving very fast because we've now got quite a lot of power to the app. So now that we have a destination, we can actually upgrade our map. So when we go back to the map component now. OK, so once we're over at the map component, now what I can do is I'm going to introduce the actual directions API. Right. So this is actually going to be the directions part of the, the sort of, you know, the build. And the way we do directions is actually pretty slick. OK, so I'm actually going to uh, in include a React Native dependency here. So we're going to go ahead and install a dependency called yarn add. It's going to be React Native Maps Directions. Enter. OK, so what this does is it sits inside of our map view component, just like a marker does. But it provides us with, you know, point A to B directions, which is awesome. Right. So what I can do now is I can firstly go ahead and grab my, we've grabbed our origin here, but I'm actually going to grab a destination as well from the store. So I'm going to say use a selector, select destination. We're going to import that as well. So now we've got our origin and our destination. And what I'm going to say is if we have both the origin and the destination, then I want to render out the direction. So I'm going to say if I have my origin and I have my directions, oh, destination, sorry, destination. Oops. And I have my destination, right? Then what I can do is I can go ahead and say, uh, let's render out the map view directions component, which we need to import. Okay. So once we've installed that package, well, I need to go to the top and install it, uh, import it, sorry, import like so. And then we go ahead and pop it in like so. This is a self closed component. It just takes a bunch of attributes to work. And in order to get it to work, what we do is we go ahead and oh my god we're almost at yeah 1.7k likes let's go All right so at this point we're gonna we've got the origin and destination so i say origin is equal to the origin dot description so this actually takes some text so that'll do that we say the destination is equal to destination dot description and that was actually the text remember when we set it in the store the api key we pass through and this is actually going to be the Google Maps API key. So that is actually, we need to pull it in from our environment variables. So we go ahead and pop that in. So you see how it's quite nice how it forms afterwards, right? So we do that and we say Google Maps API key. There we go. And then we're also going to go ahead and say, we've given it the key, we've given it the origin destination. And then they've got these two nice sort of, you know, configuration things, which are more for the appearance. So stroke width and stroke color. So one is going to be, you know, for the width and the color is black. Uber has black lines around it, right? So if I go ahead and hit save, wait for it. Oh, look, it's directions. It's got some directions right now. Um, okay, right now I need to figure that one out. So I'm trying to do something, but we can go ahead and now it's got a direction here, right? So it's doing some kind of directing for us. But if we went from rather than Scotland, let's just say we went to, uh, let's say London Bridge, London Bridge. And then you can see, look, it goes around the roundabout, down the road, and then up here, all the way over to, I mean, it's going to go to London Bridge. And then it goes to London Bridge, right? Nice. So we, we've got some directions working now, right? So we've got to solve a few problems. One is we want the map to zoom out at the point at which we have a second. So when we have a destination, I want it to zoom out and go over to the point where we have um, I went to zoom out and go to the point where we have the, you know, A and B both in the map view. So to get that working, I've actually figured out a really nice way, right? So what we need to do is we need a reference to the map. So that way I can manipulate this map. So how do I do that? Well, we're going to use the use ref hook. The use ref hook is like a massive pointer. It points at something. You can point at anything. So we're going to have a reference to the map. So that way I can attack the map or, you know, change things with the map whenever I need to. Say const map reference equals use ref, which is a nice little reference uh, hook in React. And we initialize it with the value of no to begin with. We attach it to the map view. So all this is doing now is it's saying point towards the, the map. So we're attaching it to this component. Now, this is the cool part. 
Okay, so this is the part where you gotta pay attention. We are gonna have a use effect. Now, a use effect I cover in the React Basics 101. Again, the second link in the description, you can cover all your, you know, the React Basics, use effects, what the heck is that, use state, use props. Quick little breakdown of use effect. This bit of code runs when the app or component re-renders. It runs once if I include these dependency brackets, but in this case, I want this to rerun whenever the origin or destination changes. So this is the dependency array. So this bit of code that I'm gonna have here is dependent on origin destination, which means that if it changes at any time, it's gonna rerun this code, okay? So I'm first thing I'm gonna say, if there is no origin or there is no destination, I don't wanna run this code, right? So I'm gonna kind of exit this block right here. So we can protect ourselves by saying, if there's not that, you just immediately return, don't carry on, okay? But, what? oh, oh, almost knocked out some water. Um, but at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say map ref, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna zoom and fit to the markers, okay? So I'm gonna say map reference dot current. So you basically get the current thing that we're pointing at, right? And then you have this very nice function in on this map view called fit to supplied markers, okay? And what I can do here is I can go ahead and put a parentheses. And for the first argument, it takes a markers string array. Now the first markers are gonna be origin and destination. Now, if you're wondering what are the markers, you know, like that's actually this one here, identifier origin. So I need a destination marker, right? So I'm actually gonna quickly add that one in now as well. And then we can carry on with that little uh, top bit of code. So I'm actually gonna copy a block in this exact same as the origin, except that we change the destination and then the identifier to be destination as well, right? Now destination, we get from here as well. It's saying that you need uh, to import the use effect. So let's go ahead and import our use effect like so. So we import that from React at the top. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit. So I've passed in the origin and the destination markers. And the second argument is actually gonna be something it's going to be something called the options okay now what you can do here is you can pass in something called edge padding now this basically means when it zooms in how much room around the side of the screen do you want to give towards you know the top left middle right and all that so i'm going to give everything like a 50 i think right that means that it won't zoom in like to the point where the, each mark is touching the side i want to kind of pad it a little bit all right so hit save and let's give this a try right so let's go ahead and do london uk okay cool and let's go ahead and do something like Essex. Okay, boom. Aha, check it out guys, that's sick. All right, we have our pointer, which goes ahead and say destination is Essex, origin is London. And then if we go back and we change it, because it's inside of a use effect, which means that whenever these change, it will re-trigger off the value. Let's go ahead and say something like Birmingham, UK, boom. Now I'm sorry, but that is sick. Right, that is sick. You don't have to mess around with deltas and all this other stuff. It just works, right? So if you've ever done React Native Maps and you've ever gone into that kind of sticky situation, that's how you get out of it, right? You use fit to supplied markers and it will save the day and it will help you out. We're nearly at 1.7 likes. I think that deserves a punch to that. That was awesome, right? So this is looking pretty good at this point. Okay, so let's keep the pace, right? So we've got this down here, which is making it look pretty nice, okay? So we've got this over here, and now let's go ahead and say, like, let's just imagine we went to London Bridge, or let's just say London Eye. So this goes and navigates over to London Eye. In that case, it kind of had a weird little kind of corner case, but let's do something like uh, Scotland, Scotland, da, 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 UK. And I love how it zooms out as well. You get like a nice little slick animation, right? So the next part is picking the ride and then obviously we're gonna have some UI components down here to make it look and feel a lot more like Uber, right? In fact, let's do that at right now, right? So over on this screen, we're gonna have two extra buttons down here. So I wanna have those buttons ready and done now. So if we go back to our home screen component, we're gonna have these two extra fields down. These are pretty much UI components, right? They're not gonna have any actual functionality to it. You can upgrade this definitely on your side to have more functionality. But what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to call it nav favorites. And this is kind of like where it says go home or go here or go there. So we're going to go ahead and create a nav favorites component, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create this component over here. So I'm going to create nav favorites.js in our components folder, react native functional exported with a style sheet. 
and then this is going to be where the you know the favorites live now what i want to do for this part is i want to have it as a flat list so i've already got the data prepared for you so i'm actually going to pop the data in on the screen so you're going to have this data here now this data can actually be outside if you want so it doesn't have to block things up so you can actually have that outside and this data is just going to be one to three it's going to say home and it's going to say location home code destination and you, you can actually code this up so when you press it it actually enters in the destination if you wanted to do that you can do that ibrahim says when's the five day airbnb challenge first link in the description it starts next tuesday the third of august make sure you're there sign up say i'm registered now if you've signed up already and remember second link is for skillshare basics 101 React basics 101 so hit that airbnb sign up right now it's going to be huge i'm telling you right so at this point they think about it guys look at the quality we're dropping today like it's too, i'm just not going to stop we also hit 1.7 k likes man what is happening today that is insane i'm going to drop so much fire for react native now honestly you have no idea what is coming i'm going to keep this coming right so now over here i'm going to actually have a flat list right so i'm going to import it and i'm going to have a flat list which is a self-closed component okay now for the flat list we're going to have remember we have a few things here we have the data itself that we pass in so we pass in the data and then we also have something called the key extractor in this case the key extractor okay now the key extractor is where we pass in the item we want the item id to be the keys for each of the loops and the final one was render item right and for this one you get a let me just pop it down here you get a uh, an arrow function right with some code that gets returned for each item and then you destructure the item here okay and what do we want to render each time well, we actually want to render a touchable opacity because it's going to be a touchable looking button okay so in this case i'm going to do a touchable opacity so a touchable opacity and then that's going to be a uh, no, that's going to be a parent component and inside of it i'm going to have some an icon and the icon in this case is just going to be i'll show you exactly what it is in a second um but in this case let me just do some text and just say test or something right so before we get too ahead of ourselves say yo hit save okay so we've got this out on the screen. So on the home screen now, I'm going to import my nav favorites and we should see yo, yo. And these are both touchable buttons. Okay. And I'm, the reason why we're going to do this is I'm also going to have this on this screen. So I'm going to have it in two locations. And we're also going to have a menu button that goes back to the menu in case you don't want to swipe back. So lots of things still yet to come. We're moving at a very good pace and we are going to crush this build. We are literally smashing it right now. And honestly, this is like, this is insane. So let's keep going, guys. I'm enjoying this so much. Okay. So for the nav favorites, we're also going to go ahead and say nav favorites. And then inside of here, for the text, we're going to have some icons here. Now, as you can see, what I've actually done here is each of the items themselves have icons attached to them. So what I'm doing is I'm using the icon set from React Native Elements. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, render out an icon with the following styles, which I'll explain. So we're gonna render out the following icons. So tailwind, margin right of four, rounded four, background gray 300 and a padding of three with the icon from the item. Now you can see we haven't actually got the icon. So what I can do is I can do ES6 destructuring, which breaks into the item and gets a couple of things. In this case, I want the location, destination and the icon from these components so all we're doing is we're basically breaking into this component and making it simple to go ahead and do it all right so sunny me and my university are massive students for you oh that's awesome dude um and i just nigel carter says we are waiting for uber to clone some uh, for quite some time now yeah honestly that's it man uh yeah i love you guys honestly i'm reading all the comments as well hit save and now he says it doesn't have tailwind so i always forget that my bad don't hate me all right do that save and now you can see, boom, we get these two massive things, right? Obviously, it's not that nice. I want to clean this up a bit. So right now, I'm going to say, remember, by default, it's columns, right? So what I'm actually going to do here is say style is tailwind, back ticks. And then here I'll say flex row. I don't want to have flex column. I'm going to say item should be centered. So I'm going to, because I might have more than one thing in that thing. And I'm going to say padding five. Okay, looking nice already. And then I'm going to have a view and I'm also going to show you some emit tricks like view with some text inside. So view with text times two. Boom. I want to have two text fields inside of a view. 
And the first one is going to say the location. And the second one is going to say the, dis the destination. I keep saying dis description. And you can see, look, home. And now you can see where I'm going with this, right? So you see when on Uber, you have that sort of, you know, clickable sort of thing where you can have your favorites. So that work, home, work. All right now, let's just style these up so they look perfect. So we're going to say for this one, the style of Tailwind back ticks. And this one's going to say font semi bold. And it's going to be text, which is large. Okay, that looks nice. And then for the destination, I'm going to say it should be a style with a tailwind, back ticks, and it should be text gray, uh, 500. The reason why I love tailwind as well is because you have such a nice color palette that you can always use as well, which is really awesome. Okay, that looks pretty damn good, guys. I really do like that. Now, if I want to have separators between items in a flat list, we can actually add in an additional sort of thing here, which we can add in is it called item separator component. Here, what we do is we have an arrow function which returns some, you know, JSX. And this we can pretty much pass in a view. So I'm just going to pass in a view, a self closing view, by the way. And this one is going to be interesting. I'm just going to say it's passing a style. And this style, again, I'm going to show you, you know, typically you can use, you know, just tailwind styles and all that. So I'm going to say BG gray five 200. But if I did like a height here of one, you see, that's quite a thick line and I can't go lower than that in the height for Tailwind. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to combine Tailwind styles with, uh, you know, inline styles. And I'm going to say, give it a height of 0.5. Notice how I made it an array syntax. And now we get a super thin line, which is a divider between the components. And if I did in another one now, the nice thing about a flat list is you see, it will just add on to that list. Okay. Boom. Looks good. What's really nice about this is I can go ahead and click get a ride and I want that to appear underneath here as well. All right. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and say if we go to our map screen and I go down to let's go to our map screen. Now it's underneath. Where's it gone? It's actually going to be in the uh, da, da, da. it's actually going to be in the navigate card. So navigate card. So inside a navigate card at the bottom underneath this view i'm going to have the nav favorites and now boom it's there as well so this is what i love about react in general that we reusable components completely upgrades the app right and it's completely reusable which is sick right which looks really nice at this point so now we've got two things and there. obviously i'm going to set that as a challenge for you guys it's not that hard you know you can do on press whatever's in there you can add that to make that the destination then you can have a quick shortcut to it I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to do that after watching this build, right? We've explained a few of the steps there. Pretty sure you guys can do that. You guys are awesome. Okay. So nav options are done. Now at this point, I want to have this bottom part here. Now, before I do that, you see when I do command J, ah, that's an issue. And you're going to find this in a lot with react apps. That's not a good user experience at all. And imagine on a smaller phone, that's going to be a damn headache, right? So the way we fix this in this case, because the entire thing is a component and I want the entire thing to shift up, we're going to use something called a keyboard avoiding view, right? Now, this is one of those things that can become a bit of a nightmare when you're learning React Native, but I'm going to do it over at the app.js level just to be, you know, a completely basic introduction to this now. What you need to do is you need to import something called the keyboard avoiding view from react native. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and here and pull in the keyboard avoiding view. Now we don't actually need the style sheet here and get rid of that. And we can get rid of the style sheet there. So we're importing keyboard avoiding view. And what we do is we're going to put it above the navigator level. So below the safe area provider for the icons. Um, but we're going to put it there. Okay. And I'm going to put all the navigator contents inside over here okay almost a 1.8k likes guys keep on smashing that thumbs up button if you haven't already and let's keep this thing moving and now you realize you can't see anything and you're probably wondering oh no all our hard work this is just because we need to go ahead and give it a flex of one right so you can do it two ways tailwind or this way i'm just gonna give it a flex of one and that allows it to use up all the space that it possibly can okay now what we can do at this point is if i do a command k now still Hmm, still a bit of an issue, right? So what you need to do is you need to give it an, a behavior attribute. Now, to make this work correctly on iOS, it handles slightly different to on Android. So that it takes a property called behavior. 
Now, the way we sort of do this shift up motion in iOS is through padding. And the way it works on Android is through height manipulation. So the way that we can sort of be, you know, sort of check this out is we can use something called platform, which is something which React Native gives us. So we can import this from, where is it? Import this from React Native. We say, if the iOS platform is being used, use padding, otherwise use the height, okay? So that's the first thing. Now, if I do this, I do command K. Oh, oh, that's nice. All right, so it actually moves it up now. So we have enough room to work with now, All right? So, you know, imagine you can still type in, you still see all the search results. Looks awesome, works, All right? Now there is a final little difference you can do. You can actually add something called keyboard vertical offset. And the lucky charm for me in this case is to say, if you're on iOS, do minus 64. Um, which means if we're, afterwards we're going to have a little bottom component and I kind of want to crop it out by 64 but on Android they handle this for you hence we do zero but on iOS I need to do minus 64 okay but now if we do it see how it crops in a little bit and there's a reason why I want to do that right because afterwards I want to add in one more UI element at the bottom but we're getting there guys we are damn well getting there this is amazing right um let's carry on and we still got the uh, i love this comment so uh juan pablo says 1.7k likes you break the matrix honey i love that you said that just at the moment where we are going to do the distance matrix work for the google api so uh, that's pretty sick <laughs> uh, i registered online i can't wait thank you for the valuable lessons you're giving online at react ibrahim thank you so much dude and guys also while we're here we're about to go on to you know finish off this one little navigator section then we're going to do the time traveling and all that stuff in a second but comment right now if you've taken advantage of that second link, the Skillshare link, which is for React Basics 101. I recommend, even if you know your React, watch it. I would binge watch this stuff if I had it at the time when I was learning. So the second link in the description, free month of Skillshare that you get with my React Basics 101 that I've sorted out for you guys. So make sure you take advantage of it. Trust me, it will help you guys out, okay? So at this point, we've done that work. So we're gonna go back to the actual map screen and back to the navigate card. And inside the navigate card, we are now gonna go ahead and do the following. So um, we're gonna go ahead and drop a view underneath here. So underneath here, we're gonna have a view. And this is basically gonna say, it's gonna have a little rides button, right? So this is pretty much what we like to have. We have a rides button. Also, and also, yeah, guys, if you enjoy the React Basics uh, sort of, you know, content on Skillshare, please drop a positive review. Massively helps other students find and reach it when you do that because uh, it pushes it higher in the list and it helps us grow and it helps me do this full time. So would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, guys. Right. So we're going to have a view underneath here, right? And now inside of this view, we're going to have two buttons, a touch, two touchable opacities. And one is going to say, you know, rides and one is going to say uh, Uber Eats sort of thing. This is just how the normal Uber app works and looks. OK, so at this point, um, Arthur says, keep grinding. Just want to say, can you please shift to focus on CSS and concepts like Redux or more intimate? This has actually got a lot of Redux in it. That's why I kind of did this sort of intimidating build today. All right. So let's carry on. So I'm going to have a first one inside of it is going to be a touchable opacity okay and this touchable opacity is going to have an icon and some text inside of it now this is going to be relatively simple so i'm just going to pop it in an icon which is going to be from font awesome which is a picture of a car color is white size 16 and the text is going to be text white through tail and styling text center and it's going to say rides okay we save this it's going to freak out because we haven't done our imports so i'm going to import the icons up above Hit save. What else have we important? Let's do this. We've got... Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so it's white at the moment. That's why. So the touchable opacity, I actually want to make that a different color. Right, so I'm going to here, I'm going to say style equals. And this one's going to be uh, tailwind. And this one is going to have flex. And it's going to be flex row. And to make sure that you can see it right now, I'm going to do BG black. So you can see what I'm doing. But now you can see like rides comes up. Okay. So this is going to be a width of 24. I'm going to give the padding on the X axis a four and a padding on the Y axis of three. And you can see already we get nice and we'll make it rounded, rounded four. So that's why I love Tailwind guys. It's so nice to get stuff like that working as smooth and slick as it is like that. Right. So it's just so quick to do stuff like that. Right. And then I'm going to have another touchable opacity. This is going to follow the exact same similar approach. I'm literally just going to copy uh, uh, the touchable opacity right now and chuck it down here. 
and you can pretty much go ahead and pause the video and see the difference. Only difference here is I didn't do BG um, black. Instead, I made the text of the color, the icons black. And I didn't do BG white or text white, sorry, here. I just did black text. That's why we've got this nice view here. Now, this bottom section by default flexes column, hence why it's stacking up. On the view here, I want to do style equals tailwind, back tick, back tick. I'm going to say flex row. So that's the first thing I want to do, flex row. And you can see it goes into a row now. BG white. Right? Oh, this is a nice song. Yeah. I'm going to do justify evenly. Justify evenly. I think I have the best coding playlist. I, I'm, I'm just going to say it out. I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there and start a war. Right? I think I have the best coding playlist. I'm, I take pride in my coding playlist. Right? Because it's, it's just a fun, you know, playlist to go ahead and code with. All right, so justify evenly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say padding Y of two, margin top of auto, because I want it to basically take up the majority of the room at the top. If we don't have margin top auto, it just stick above, you know, where it can. I want it to push all the way to the bottom. I want a border on the top. And then I'm gonna say border gray 100, right? Border gray 100. Okay. And there you can see now we've got a nice little border at the top as well. So you see how nice that looks. Now the rides looks a bit squashed there, doesn't it? All right. So for the rides, what I actually want to do is we have the icons and stuff like that over there. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So I actually want to fix that a little bit because that looks a bit squashed up right now. So I want to check. Have I got it slightly different here? I think I've just skipped a step. Let me just go ahead and see if there's a difference. There's a minor difference there, but... Oh, yeah. Oops. So for the actual touch will pass it, I need justify between. Justify between for the icon. Justify between. I completely forgot to do that. And there you can see now the rides shifted over. Now, when I click this button, I want to navigate to the next screen as well. Right? So for this one, I actually want to do on press... Right, for that button, I'll say on press equals. And what this will do is it will say navigation dot navigate. And we haven't actually imported this, which is why I can't see it, I don't think. And it's ride options card. So this will also take you to the next screen. All right, so now you can click on rides and it'll take you to the next screen as well. So you see that? You get a nice little rides as well, as well as when you do this. So London, I've actually done London to London now, so that's basically. But if we do like London to Birmingham, you see now. Okay, so now we're moving over to the ride option screen. So the really fun part now is where we calculate the total travel time, the total mileage. And in addition, we're also going to say what you want to ride in, UberX, UberXL, and UberLux. And I've actually implemented my own little custom pricing, which means that the further away you drive, the more it will charge you and so forth. And then we also have a surge pricing parameter. So imagine, you know, sometimes you're on your Uber and you'll, you see that message where it says, you know, uh, it's actually quite busy at the moment. So we're offering surge, surcharge. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, so this is going to be fun, guys. All right nearly at 1.8k likes holy all right let's carry on wow okay so for this one now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into the this screen okay so this screen is actually going to be the ride options card and this one is being rendered from the map screen under our second stack navigator which is why i can swipe back and forth like this okay so inside of ride options i'm going to go ahead and set up a bunch of stuff now okay so first thing is we're going to have a safe area view because remember we have, you know, some area stuff that we don't want to, you don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to import that in here and sometimes it doesn't work properly. So there we go. Okay. And then I'm going to have, uh, at the top, I'm going to have a sort of, you know, our own custom header. So I'm actually going to have a bit of text here saying select a ride. So let's go ahead and say select, select a ride. Okay. And this will be centered. And then we're also going to go ahead and center this out. So I'm going to say style. Oops. Uh, so do tailwind, back tick, back tick. Text center. Okay. Padding Y5 and text should be extra large. Okay. Dope. Oh, nice, dude. 
Thank you so much, uh, Storytime Web Design. $5 donation. Just signed up for the Skillshare class. Thanks for putting this content out there, Sonny. Appreciate it, dude. Massive thank you for that. And if anyone else wants free React Basics 101, second link in the description, go and enjoy it right now for free. All right? It's going to help you out. And appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much for that donation. All right. So let's do this. Boom. Save. Okay. Tailwind. Hey, it comes through. Nice. All right. So you can see a selector, right? So if I do london uk boom we're in london we say let's just say scotland scotland uk okay and select a ride nice we're on this screen now now as we see you can see that there's a slight background difference white and gray so i'm going to go ahead and change that as well so here for safe area of view i'm going to say style should be tailwind back to back tick vg white flex grow Okay, and then now you can see that I should, and just to prove, let's do 500, and there you go. Okay, so it is doing it, right? I'm going to get paranoid about this stuff. I like to make it look perfect, right? So we got that. Now we're going to do 1.8K done. Oh my goodness. It changed color a bit. Oh my God. That's insane. That is insane. Jay, if you're watching right now, holy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's carry on. Okay. <laughs> so sick. All right. Select a ride. So I'm going to go ahead and we have the text up here. And I'm going to surround this actually in a view. I'm going to move this into a view because on this one, I'm actually going to have a touchable button. So I'm going to say touchable opacity. And this is going to be a button with an icon inside of it, which is going to be like a back sort of carrot. Right. So it's going to have a back button, which is going to navigate back. Right, so touchable opacity, and that's going to have an icon inside of it. The icon is going to be chevron left from font awesome, so we just pop that in like so. Okay, and now you can see, and uh, <laughs> thank you, K K G F and say, I just had a three hour call with a call center regarding website, and honestly, think you're better than development than the whole team. Ah, oh, thank you, dude, I appreciate that. I think we can hit 2,000 likes today. I really genuinely think we can hit 2,000 likes today. Guys, if you think we can do that, that would blow my damn mind. So let's do this, right? So at the top, I need my navigate because you see, we've got this nice little kind of carousel there, but I want it to, oh, sorry, carrot, but I want this to kind of look a bit nicer. So this view should actually be styled out. Now, the way I need to do this is we have the icon, we have select a ride. And right now, actually, what I might do here is I might absolute position this because I don't want to shift anything around, but I always want it in that spot. So what I'm going to do is for this touchable opacity, I'm going to say style equals tailwind. I'm going to do absolute positioning, I think. So I'm going to do absolute. I'll say top should be three. And I'm going to go ahead and say left should be five. Let's hit save. And you can see, let's wait for it to move. Touchable opacity style, absolute. Oh, oops. There we go. I messed that up. So it should be tailwind tailwind there we go and now you see it moves over a little bit nice and then i'll do padding of three and i'll do rounded four because i don't know yeah i do want something there eventually but when i click it right when i click this out i actually want this to be um it wanted to take me back right so in order to do that what i do is i say on press okay so what I do is I say on press, on press, and then I go ahead and say an arrow function and I do navigation. So I know to do navigation, I need my navigate object. So I navigation equals use navigation. And then here I'll go ahead and say this. And I can say navigation dot. Um, and then here you can do can go back and all sorts of other stuff. In this case, what I'm gonna do is very clever actually. If you do navigate to the previous card, it will handle it for you. So I'll say navigate, and then we're actually going to go back to the navigate card. So check this out. Now I can either swipe back or I can click this. And right now, why is it not clickable? Um, let's have a look. We've got absolute top left three, blah, 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 padding round four. Okay. And then we've got touchable opacity, BG flex grow, touchable opacity. Okay. Looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. So weird little fix there actually. 
I had a yeah, I found yeah, so it's a weird one. If you add it, if you don't have these um curly braces, oh no, it was there, it wasn't there. So you don't need that. Yeah, it was just a bit stuck. Okay, so now you can see I here I can click a little so we've got our own custom header here. So you see, you can do it that way as well, right? Several ways of you know fixing issues. Okay, so we need to render a list of cars that you can potentially, you know, access and all that stuff. So how do I do that? Okay. Da -da. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and say for the flat list. So I'm gonna actually have a flat list underneath now. So underneath select a ride. So underneath this view, I'm actually gonna have a flat list. So I'm gonna import it. And this is a self-closed component. So similar to the exact flat list that we have used before. And here I'm gonna say const data equals, I'm gonna have my sort of, you know, data above. I'm gonna chuck this over here. So this data is gonna be UberX. So you see each one has a different ID, right? IDs just need to be unique. In this case, I've done UberX123, UberX cell, 456, UberLux789. The title of each that's gonna show UberX, UberX cell, UberLux. The multiplier, this is gonna be the cost multiplier. So for an UberX, it's gonna be the normal cost. For an UberX cell, it's gonna be 1.2 times the cost. For an Uber Lux, it's gonna be 1.75 because it costs more to get a luxury car, right? And then each of the images, I've gone ahead and saved you a bit of hassle and you can go ahead and use that, okay? So at this point, we've got the data, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pass the data through for the flat list. So we're gonna say the data is here, okay? And what? how do we actually render this data out? Okay, so I can have the key extractor firstly because we wanna get our keys. And we're gonna say the item ID is gonna be the keys, okay? And then for the rendering, <clears throat> this is where we say render item. And then for each one, remember we get the an arrow function where we return, hence the parentheses, and we destruct an item. And that item is gonna be, you know, each of the things in that list. And then inside of here, what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna go ahead and say a touchable, so this is a bit where you've got to pay attention. It's gonna be a touchable opacity firstly. So touchable opacity. And this, I'm just gonna go ahead and say text for now and say car. So now you can see that three cars come rendered out on the screen. So we know something's working at this point. That's what I would say you should do. All right, we're close to 1.9k likes as well, guys. Smash the thumbs up. If you're still watching, hit the subscribe button. If you're enjoying this, let's keep on going. We're so close to the end now, okay? So we've got the car, okay? Now, obviously, I don't want to just say the car. I want to have an image firstly. So for the image, we've used an image before, so I'm going to go ahead and save us a little bit of time. Pop an image in here, and the style is going to be a width and a height of 100. The resize is going to be contained to keep the aspect ratio, and the source is going to be the image of the item. Now, I don't want to do item.image, so I'm going to destructure the item here. We'll say ID, title, multiplier, image, right? And, I'll, and if, you are, if you are destructuring, but you still want the item, you can actually get the item still like that. So many of you may not know that trick, but you can still get the item if you do that, okay? So you can destructure all the properties, but still get the item. And for the image component, I'm actually going to import that from React. There we go. And let's go ahead and go from London to let's just say Scotland okay and there you go got my cars nice that looks pretty sick right nice this is looking good guys looking good we're almost at 1.9k likes that is insane okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we've got these image tags and then I'm gonna have the actual sort of title so UberX UberXL UberLux and so forth so at this point I'm gonna have a view and this view is going to have the text. So I'm going to have, so I'm going to show you a little Emmet trick. Rather than saying that, I can say view with text times by two. And we get the little nice little snippet. And I'm going to say the title should go in here. Title should go in here. And then here, I just want to have, let's just say travel time, dot, dot, dot. So we're going to estimate that afterwards. So we're going to have UberX, travel time. And you see there's a scrollable list. Okay. So for this view, um i want to do the following so firstly for the touchable opacity i want to style this up a bit because right now it doesn't look that good i'm gonna say style tailwind i'm gonna say everything should be in a row because right now it's kind of in a column so that looks better but i want it to be in the center so i say items center and then it goes central and i say justify the items between themselves so justify between save and then you go it kind of pushes it apart 
right? So at this point, what we can do is I'm gonna say panning X of 10, should we panning X of 10? Okay, All right? So it looks a bit strange at this point, but I'll show you why we do this and what we're gonna be achieving when we have this, right? So this isn't the end or will be all, don't worry, the style will change, it's all good, All right? So panning X of 10, and then I'm also gonna say, okay, so I'm gonna show you afterwards as well. If you select it, how you can highlight the, the sort of selected option. I'll show you how to do that in a sec as well. Okay, so we've got the title, the travel time, and then we're also gonna have the money aspect of it, okay? So I'm also gonna have a final text thing over here, which will say something like, just to say 99 pounds, but we wanna make that dynamic afterwards. Right. So for this text, I'm actually going to make it a style and this is going to be a Tailwind uh, text Excel. So it's going to be a little bit bigger text Excel. And this is why I like Tailwind. It's so fast to style. Right. Otherwise, it will take ages if you're doing that normally. Now for this one, the other view, I'm going to pull that a little bit more left. So I'm going to give that a negative margin left. So Tailwind uh, negative margin left of six pulls it a little bit more that way. Just a nice little tweak, I thought. Right. For the title, little style tweak here, Tailwind. I'm gonna go ahead and give a dash dash and say uh, text extra large, text extra large. And I'm also gonna give it a font of semi bold, font semi bold. And then you can see, boom, we get a nice bigger option. Okay, looking good guys. And um, okay, this is looking thick, All right? So Sunny seems so tired. No, 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 I'm good, dude. I am, I am full of energy. We're nearly at 1.9K likes. I could not be more awake. Water break. Okay. Always use glass bottles. They're kind of you know they're good for the environment. All right. UberX, Uber XL, Uber Lux. Okay. So we've got the three different options at this point. And obviously we're gonna plug in the Google Distance Matrix so that way we can see what the travel time is, how many miles that we're gonna be traveling, and then calculate a price accordingly. All right. All of this to come. So it's a lot of fun, right? Stick with me, guys. Okay, so at this point, we're so close, by the way. So close. All right. So at this point, almost at 1.9. Oh my God, if we hit 2K lights, I'll scream this place down. All right. So at this point, we're going to have to do the following. So when I click it, I want to, how do I get it to show me which one's highlighted? So when you have a flat list, you can do a pretty cool little thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a piece of state to keep track of what's selected. So in the React, you can say, it's a simple React stuff. We can say selected, set selected. And this is basically preparing a piece of state, which by default is going to be no. So nothing is selected. And if again, if you don't understand this, feel free to check out my second link in the description, React Basics 101 for free on Skillshare. So get a recap of that. I would binge watch it if you don't know what that meant, right? I would recommend doing that. Okay. So once we've got that down, you want to go down to your, uh, da -da -da, when you go to your touchable opacity, button over here in the flat list we're gonna say on press and I, what i would do is i'll say set the selected item set the selected item to that right so basically when you press it i want to say when you press one of those rows it's going to set the selected item to this right and there's a reason why i'm going to do this it's going to be pretty cool in a sec right we need to import our use state pop in from react at the top there you go hit save boom Go back to our screen. Let's just do London. Douche, douche. Let's go to Scotland. Okay. Um, oh, what have I done here? You stay. Oh, damn it. Okay. Stay all the time. London, UK, Scotland. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Look how nice the flow is, right? We're taking it for granted that this was all done right now. So sick. Iran in the house. What's up, dude? Right, so you got, if we click this now, it's actually storing the state for the selected car or the item, right? So what we can do now is we can actually apply a conditional style. So after this, I can say, okay, if the ID that w of the thing that we're mapping through is equ equal to the selected, and something might not be selected, so I'm going to optional chain it, selected ID, then I want to apply BG gray 200. Boom. Aha, look at that guys. How sick is that? And now you have a selected thing. And if you're wondering, oh, well, you could have just used the ID, you know, you could have just set the ID in there. No, because I want to use that information at the bottom afterwards to show which car you've selected. Okay, so that was damn pretty cool, right? Um, 
<laughs> Nigel Carter says, when you hit 2K, you would decide on completing part two of the app reboots? Well, you know, maybe, maybe, we'll see. I think we're about to hit 1.9. I think we can maybe hit 2K. I think we can do this. Okay, so we've got this happening right now. Select a ride, awesome stuff. We can go back and forth. So clean, I say so clean, right? So at this point, we're gonna have the little button at the bottom that we need to implement, okay? So that button at the bottom is gonna be simply, it's gonna be outside of the touchable opacity, right? So we've got the touchable opacity and what we have here, no, sorry, we've got the flat list over here. There we go, we've got the flat list over here and then we're gonna have a view, okay? So inside of this view, we're gonna have a touchable opacity touchable opacity right and this touchable opacity is going to have a piece of text inside of it which is going to say choose you know choose a car right in this case if you if you have a car selected it's going to say selected dot because it may not be sorry optional chaining it may not be selected selected dot title now if you see down here see how when i select a car it changes All right so that's going to be the basis of the button right that's going to be the basis of the button right so now what we're going to do you can see how this is starting to fly together right and it, and this is the beauty of tailwind react native everything coming together uh tailwind dash dash and we're going to say text should be centered text should be centered text should be white and i want to do text should be extra large now you're probably wondering why would you do that you can't see the button now but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to say the style is going to be um, Tailwind BG Black. BG, baby. Oh, I like this tune. That's good. There we go. Black button. There you go. Nice. Look at that. It's starting to look better. And then we're going to say the padding on the Y axis should be three. And we should also have a margin of three. You can have it touching the side if you want. I mean, it looks pretty cool. But I'm going to have a little bit of a margin so it's not touching. And because we're in the safe area, it's not going to go down here. Okay. Oh, Seattle in the house. What's up, Daniel? Guys, if you're new, remember, first link in the description. Next Tuesday, we have a huge React, uh, React Airbnb challenge. Five days of me coding React and Airbnb. So if you're new or anything like that, hit that you know registration link and let me know. And guys, sign up. Ten thousand worth pounds worth of prizes. So it's gonna be so much. It's gonna be so much fun. Okay. So let's carry on. What we're gonna do now is. Uh, oh, it's so close to 1.9. All right. So now we've got this happening. I'm going to also say that this button should be disabled if you haven't selected anything. All right. So I'm going to say touch wall basket should be, oops, should be disabled if there is no uh, selected item. And also if there is no selected item, I'm also going to say that the background should be gray. So I'm going to say if there is no selected item, then we should apply BG gray uh 300 okay now if i go back and i go forward you see how nothing selected and then when i click it then it says choose uber choose uber x so that looks sick right see how when i come back boom awesome okay guys so with that said now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and complete the build by adding in the distance the google distance matrix api now this allows us to calculate the total distance from point A to point B, right? And what that will do is it will allow us to essentially be able to say select a ride with the miles. It will tell us how long it will take to get to the destination with the Uber. And then we can use the relevant information from that distance matrix to calculate a price that we can then charge the customer, okay? So a lot of stuff happening right now. So what we're going to be doing is I'm actually going to go ahead and have uh, the following occur. So we actually need to go ahead and inside of the map screen is where I'll have a lot of the logic for this because the map has this function. So I think it's actually inside of map we do it. Yeah, so inside of map we do it because all of the details are stored, you know, around the map. So it makes sense to have it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a use effect, right? And this use effect is going to be completely responsible for um, calculating the travel time. Okay, so it's going to be completely responsible for calculating the travel time. And what this is going to be dependent on uh, is on based on the origin, the destination, and the Google Maps API key. Okay, so it's going to be these three things are going to be, you know, 
the, this use effect code is going to be dependent on these few variables. Okay. So this is awesome right now. What we're going to be doing is we're using the Google distance matrix to make this happen. So anytime you want some asynchronous code, asynchronous, because we now need to make a request to that API to say, here's the origin, here's the destination. Give me back the information as opposed to how long it will take the time, blah, 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 all that stuff. And right, what I'm going to do is I'm then going to push that into Redux. So that way I can go ahead and go to my other component, the one where I select a ride and pull it from there using the travel time selector. Okay. So let's carry on. <clears throat> so, do, do, do. so at this point, we're going to have the use effect and I'm going to say const get travel time. So in order to have an asynchronous bit of code, you have to have a, an actual block of code inside and then you invoke that code like so get travel time but we're going to have an asynchronous block you can't just use async away you can't do this inside of uh, hooks because like a user effect hook it breaks the rules of hooks and if you're not sure about that then you're going to check out the second link in the description guys we just hit 1.9k that's insane we're about to hit 2k likes in one video oh my god if we hit 2k likes i am i'm going to sit here in shock that like I'd never thought in one video would hit that just from me, you know, being live. It's crazy, honestly. All right, let's keep going. So we get the travel time. So at this point, we're gonna say, we're actually gonna protect ourselves again. We're gonna say if, so before all of this, I'm gonna say if, wait for it. Da, da, da. If there is no original destination return, so I'm gonna have the same, you know, careful code there and, um, what we're also going to do, I mean, you can have that inside of this block if you want it, or you can optimize it a bit more, have it there if you want, that's fine. And basically we're making a fetch to a Google API. So this is basically called a, a get request, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm making a call to quite a long query URL, right? So the const, the URL that we're making a query to is actually this one right here. Okay. So it's this URL right here. Now notice how I use backticks because I can interpolate some values from JavaScript inside. So this is the one that you want to do maps.googleapis.com forward slash maps forward slash API forward slash distance matrix JSON. And then here we set the units to Imperial and the origin we pass through at this point. Now this origin we're getting from Redux, the destination we pass through here. So destination to description. So we're giving, you know, like London, UK, Scotland, and then the key we're passing as well. So this is like the magic to URL. Okay. So what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to say fetch, right? So I'm going to say fetch this information, right? So fetch it, which means basically make a request to that endpoint to get some information. Once this comes back, we should get a response. Now this response, we need to pass it as a JSON object. So we do it like this. Okay. And then after that, what we do is we say dot then, and then we have access to the data. Now this gives us a bunch of information back. For example, how long it takes to get from point A to point B and all that stuff. Now I've already done the hard work for you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dispatch the travel time information into it. But to prove that it works, I'm going to do console log data. I'm going to show you. Okay. Because I, I want you guys to see it for yourself. So you see now, if I go ahead and do console log, you see how it came out with the Destination is Scotland, origin is London. And then in here we got the distance matrix. So it says 470 miles. And then it says, uh, oh God, that freaked me out. Something dropped on my desk. And then here it said a text is eight hours, seven minutes. And then we have this very handy little value here that we're gonna use to actually calculate the price. So you guys can see how this is working, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and make a sort of, you know, we're going to store this information inside of a uh, Redux. So I'm going to use the dispatch. So if I got the dispatch, I need to get my dispatch. So dispatch equals use dispatch. And I'm going to say, uh, yeah, use dispatch, sorry. And then here I'll say dispatch and I will say set, oops, set, uh, travel time information. So remember we set this up earlier on and the payload for this is actually going to be I'm going to basically, I've already done the hard work for you. So that information that came back, I only want to get this bit of it, right? So you see, we've got to access this kind of object that comes back and all that stuff. So I've done, I've kind of saved you a lot of the headache for this, right? We actually already have the origin and destination. Do I don't, I don't need to keep that. So what I can actually do here is you can say data dot rows, 
we're going to access the first array dot elements and it's an array i'm accessing the first element okay so i've saved you a bit of hassle there don't worry thank, thank me there right all good so now we have the travel time information available to us which means i can go to any component because we just dispatched an action to update the redux global store with that information which is awesome it allows us to then access it anywhere inside of our components okay so in this case i go to ride options and now here i want to grab that information so what i can do is i can go ahead and go over to my uh inside my ride options card and i can go and say travel time information so travel time information oops information information equals use selector import it from our react redux and i'm going to go ahead and get say select travel time information and pull that in from uh nav slices as well so now inside of here we now have access to it which means if i say select a ride you guys are going to be blown away with this right now right smash the like button if you're enjoying this right now i'm going to do select a ride dash and then here what i do is i say wait for it oh man this came at the right time all right so i'm gonna say travel time oh no where have we gone yeah dash and then i'll say travel time information it, it's optional because it might be you know asynchronous or loading and here i'll say distance dot text so this is actually the information that came back before distance dot text hit save select a ride 470 miles now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go from london to let's say essex Essex, you so sick. All right, and then for the travel time, what I'm going to do instead. Oh, I kind of cut out a little bit. I think we're good. All right, I think we're good. Jay, give me a heads up if we're good. But okay, cool. Let's carry on. So yeah, travel time, 32.6 miles, right? Oh, uh, no, sorry. That, that's the distance. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and say the travel time here, instead of this, I'm actually going to go ahead and do something else. I'm going to say the actual distance. So I'm going to say travel information dot and this is going to be again uh da, 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 duration dot text now duration dot text okay and this one is going to be and i'm going to add travel time after it so travel time aha look at that guys 55 minutes and just to prove that this works let's say i went to like germany right it's going to take ages right so if i go to germany and i think i've timed out uh, on that so let's do london you have time this out so sometimes because i'm i keep spamming it it's rate limited so what i can do is i can refresh i can do london to get a ride say germany let's go as a germany 10 hours 24 minutes travel time haha <laughs> so sick 520 uh, miles and now the price the price is the final piece of the puzzle are you guys ready to do the price so for the price what i've done is if you notice that from here we actually got back a distance of value so what i did is i figured out a nice little formula that works well with it that figures out an approximation of the price okay first thing we need to do is actually have a const let's uh, like a constant right and this constant is going to represent a surge price right so in this case we're going to say const and i'm going to call it the surge charge rate and this is really good for like if you have you know like surcharge or you know like when you how many of us have been on uber and it says you know currently there is a lot of demand in the area and we are charging three times the amount to take you home right so in this case 1.5 is the current rate let's just say right but imagine that if it was busy that could go up to two and you can make that you know a piece of state and modify it you can do whatever you want right but this is kind of a little architecture point so surge charge rate now with that charge rate for the price i'm going to do some pretty cool stuff over here so i'm going to use the internationalization javascript api it's a bit of a mouthful but basically what this does is it allows me to format a piece of text using a natural javascript api so it's literally built into javascript and then we're actually going to be able to use our you know custom formula to make this work so what i'm going to say here is for the price right and i'm going to go ahead and space this out so you guys can see exactly what i'm doing so i'm going to say new international so this is built into javascript dot and here you can see number format is what we're going to do parentheses and i'm going to say engb because i want to do great britain okay I pass in an option and here with this option I can say style is I'm going to pass this number based on the currency 
Okay, so this is going to be a currency passing number. Okay, I'm going to pass the space number. Guys, let's hit 2000 before we hit the end of this video. Come on, that's going to be crazy, right? Style currency. And I'm going to say the currency itself is going to be GBP. Okay, so we've got style currency and the currency itself is going to be GBP. Okay, the next thing we do is we have that number formatted and we say a format, sorry, the number. And we pass in a number here or a value. Now for this number, I'm just gonna give some space so that way you can see exactly what number this is. So I'm gonna say, okay, this number is basically gonna be the travel time information, which isn't optional because it may not be there in the beginning, duration, value. So this number will be higher if the duration is longer, okay? I'm gonna times this by the surge charge rate, so by 1.5, by 200 or whatever. And then each car has its own multiplier, so I'm gonna apply that as well. So if it's UberX, it'll be one, 1 1.2, 1.75. And then I'm gonna divide this by 100 to get a, like a, cause there's 100 pennies in a pound, divided by 100. Hit save. Now, are you ready for this, guys? Are you ready? As soon as I hit save, we should see pricing. Hit save. Check that out, 561 pounds to go to Germany from London, which sounds about right, right? So I'm gonna do something a bit more realistic. Essex from London, 49 pounds, 17, 17. Perfect. That's literally pretty much what it would, exactly what it would cost you to go. UberX costs 49, 17. UberXL costs 59. UberLux costs 86 pounds. How sick is that? How crazy is that, guys? That is absolutely insane right keep smashing those like keep smashing that like button because now i'm going to give you guys a rundown of the app and we're going to go through every single feature that we have built in this insanely powerful uber app this is incredible guys All right the final little piece of the puzzle i'm going to do is you see when we scroll down i want to add a nice little border to that view so i'm going to say style equals tailwind dash dash i'm going to say mt auto border top border oops border gray 200 hit save and now you can see oh yeah now we get a nice little border gray i know it's very hard to see what i've done there but if we do five see it's actually there it's there but you just can't see it you see that boom it's there but i want it to be super subtle it's a gray little, little border but it looks nice all right look at that dynamics uh-huh let's do the whole flow let's reset this app and do it from right from the beginning let me know what is your favorite part of this so far, right? But look, buttons are disabled in the beginning. Let's go ahead and say, you guys tell me, where shall I go right now? You tell me, where shall I put the origin right now? And then I'm going to go ahead and pick a slot. This is a React Native Uber clone. We use Tailwind. We use uh, Redux to push information. So you guys learn Redux for this build. So much awesome, awesome stuff is happening in this build right now. So you guys let me know, where should we go? All right. I've got Turkey, I've got a few places. I'm gonna need both origin and it has to be drivable, okay? So let's have a look. We got loads of people saying India, interesting. New York, ooh, New York, New York. Okay, let's do New York, New York. I was in London to Malaysia. I think you could drive, we'll try it afterwards. Let's do New York, NY, let's go ahead and say New York, um, New York University, NYU. All right, get a ride. So I'm at New York University right here. And let's go ahead and go somewhere else in New York. So New York, let's go to the Bronx Botanical Garden. Aha, 2882 to go from, look at that, New York, the Bronx, Uber XL, Uber Lux. How sick is that, guys? Smash the thumbs up button if you thought that was cool. I'm going to do an India one in a sec as well. All right, so we got Finland, we got loads of ones happening. So California as well, we have in Dubai. Okay, let's see if you can drive from India to Dubai. All right, I wonder. And then also we need to do the menu icon, All right? So I'm also going to do the menu icon. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's do the menu icon right now because the only way to go back is to do that, right? So smash the thumbs up button if you thought I was cool. And once we do that, I'll do the final one. So I forgot to do the menu icon. So over on the home screen right now, it's actually the map screen, sorry. We need a nice little button which allows us to have a home button, right? So it's going to basically navigate us back. So above this, where we've got the, you know, the half-half split, I'm going to have a floating menu button. 
So this is going to be a touchable opacity. So touchable, touchable opacity. And this is basically going to be a component parent. Oh, this song came at the right time. All right. And I'm going to import the icons. And then we've also got our tailwind ready. Nice. And then I'm going to have an icon here, which is going to be a menu icon. All right. And then you see right now, it's kind of weirdly over here somewhere where we can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the style of this button. So style. And this is actually going to be a tailwind button. And this is actually going to be something that's absolute. Right, so it's going to be absolute position. So it's going to sit above everything. Top dash 16. So you can see, we can't really see it right now. So I will find it in a second. Left 8. Where is it gone? Right, we'll find it. I'm going to do BG Gray 100. BG Gray 100. Okay, still can't see it yet. We'll find it. I'm going to do Z index of 50. So now it comes to the top because Z index is basically the layering in which things appear on the screen. And we're going to do a padding of three, rounded of four. There we go. And now you can see, okay. But the way that we make it pop out is we add a shadow behind it. That's the little trick for the front end devs. Shadow large. And now, boom. Nice little icon which floats above everything. Okay. I can see loads of things happening. I will do a search afterwards if we hit 2K. If we hit 2K. All right. So touchable opacity, and now I'm going to do, and now I need my navigator. So I'm going to say const navigation equals use navigation. Use navigation. And then here, what I can do is I can say on press of this button, then I'm going to have an arrow function fire off, which says navigation dot navigate. And this is going to say, go to the home screen. Okay, let's start out. Home screen, boom, sick. Okay, <laughs> we keep on moving, we keep on moving. So at this point, I'm gonna go from, let's say India. Let's go to, uh, let me see, uh, do, 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 Bangalore. Everyone's saying Bangalore or something, right? So let's do Mumbai. Mumbai, Maharashtra, India. I'm not sure where that is, but okay. So we're in Mumbai right now. So anyone recognize this, All right? And we're gonna go to Dubai. Let's see if you can go from Mumbai to Dubai. Dubai, Dubai. oh, okay, that's, uh, Undefined on object travel for time. So this is because we might have an undefined at some point. So to protect yourself against this, you do travel time information. Where's it gone? Travel time information. And where we use it, all you need to do is basically go ahead and protect yourself. So at this point it is, where am I using it? Travel time dot distance dot text. So dot distance dot text. Just trying to find this in example of where we're messing this up so we've got distance dot text distance dot text this is where we are breaking so basically we just need to optional chain it here while it figures it out that's why that happened okay so at this point we can do let's do i'll tell you what let's do london to dubai for london get a ride to dubai and now we, we should be protected dubai united arab Emirates. okay so i've made the same mistake this is in the same place where have I done this duration dot text duration dot text and this is happening over here it's duration dot text so you see we need to optional chain it that's why London UK to Dubai you know how I remember so there we go <laughs> it's, a, it's an expensive drive but I'm sure someone will you know four thousand pounds to work Right? It would you could pay four thousand and it will work. Right? So at this point, you see how we overcame it, right? That's one thing I want to say to you. When an error comes up, you don't see me freak out and be like, no, it's not working. I'm a crap developer. You take it at a calm pace and then you go ahead and you just, you know, you just break it down. You use your toolkit, like optional chaining, you do all that stuff and you break it down. We are 15 likes away from 2,000 likes. Now I'm going to wrap up and show you exactly what we built in today's build. In just a second, guys. 14 likes away. All right, so it's extremely expensive. I wouldn't recommend getting an Uber to from London to Dubai, but it's interesting that you can. All right. Very interesting. Let's do Mumbai to New Delhi. Oh, look at that, guys. Again, an expensive drive, but it works, right? Awesome, awesome stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that, honestly. Especially, look at that, one day as well. Who, who fancy sitting in the Uber for one day? If you do, then you know. 2,000! Oh my god! <laughs> what is happening? Me and Jay right now in, in a separate chat are going insane. That is, oh my god. Dude. Wow. That is, oh, you know what, guys? That was absolutely inc a crazy build, right? That was, I think, I think, I, come on, let's put a vote on it. I think that was the best build we've done on the channel so far. The Uber React Native clone. Let's do a little demo of what we learned today, guys. We built an Uber clone, which has the Google Places API, the Google Distance API, and the Google Matrix API. Google, Di Google, what was it? No, it was not Google Distance. It was uh, the Directions API, sorry, for the direction from A to B. We use Google Places API for the autocomplete, and then we use the Distance Matrix API for the mileage and all that stuff crazy stuff guys absolutely insane let's go ahead and demo through uber you can type in you know let's go ahead and do london bridge get a ride right and you can also you've got nice little ui elements over here get a ride you go ahead and pinpoint it you can even click it it says origin london bridge let's click on where to and let's go ahead and say let's go to birmingham from london so birmingham uk and then boom 132 pounds to go to birmingham 127 miles and you can scroll around on the map you can click it it says destination birmingham you can now click between the two you can select a ride we even have optional styling being applied perfect lovely ui we can click we can either swipe back between the screens or we can click on this absolutely position button to go back to the home page that has been absolutely incredible guys it has been insane to build that with you all today. And uh, yeah, that's that's just absolutely insane. All right, I'm probably going to make a separate entire React Native video on deployments and all that stuff because deploying React Native apps is completely different. But what I would recommend you all do, build this out. You know, literally on, on Instagram right now, tag me, it's SSSSSanga and say like, you know, I've reached to the end of this video firstly. And also like, I would love to see some Instagram stories up today. And also guys, while I have your attention, as I mentioned before, if you thought today was good, right? We have a huge challenge happening, right? And it's gonna be absolutely crazy. You can go over to papareact.com. We have three days, 20 hours left before the challenge begins. So if you enjoyed today and you wanna see more crazy content, then you can go ahead and check out the five day React challenge. We have over 10,000 pounds worth of prizes crushing it right absolutely crushing it we don't stop on an uber build when i just maxed out on effort we just go ahead and say screw it we're gonna have a challenge next week as well right so we have a huge challenge where you're gonna get a portfolio you're gonna get an entire front end build calendar search functionality i've never done this build Mapbox integration and it's a react to next js build and the finale you're gonna get a new book that i've written so we have an absolute huge, that's 60 pages, by the way, right? I'm I'm valuing the book at 50 pounds worth and you're going to get it absolutely free by signing up and showing up to this challenge. Prizes are huge. We've got loads of prizes. All you need to go ahead and do, reserve your spot. It's limited seats. So make sure you've reserved your spot, right? It's going to be an absolute game changer of a challenge. It's going to be so much fun. We're going to have so much enjoyment throughout this challenge. It's going to be intense. And as always, guys, as even before, right, before I even show you that, I'm actually going to even like go ahead and mention that we have an absolutely huge Skillshare opportunity right now where we even have React Basics open on Skillshare. So if you're watching this video, the first link in the description or second link in the description gives you a free month. So it gives you my entire React Basics 101 class, right? And this is huge. This is, goes down all the basics of React, every single fundamental that you want in React. I cover it 
absolutely free, only possible through Skillshare. Second link in the description, that's actually a part of Zero to Full Stack Hero, that, that module. So if you want even more and you even want to level up even more, I suggest you check out Zero to Full Stack Hero at But guys, I want, you, I want to see you at that challenge. Comment right now if you're already uh, uh, if you're already registered for that challenge. But this is absolutely insane. This is absolutely, absolutely insane. Guys, such an awesome pleasure to, to be able to teach you today Uber with React Native, right? On that note, guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, I'm only, it's only right to go ahead and drop it with the Papa Fam Anthem. I'm going to go ahead and end this one on a bang, right? 2,000 likes for this video. React Native, which we've never done before. The biggest ever build that we've ever done on this channel, the Uber build so far. It was crazy hard. It was crazy intense. 2,000 likes on this stream. Over five, six, 600 people are current reviewers at one point. Crazy stuff. 30,000 plus playbacks. You guys are sick. Register for that challenge. Right, where's it gone? I don't even know where it's gone. Right, register for that challenge and be there at the Airbnb challenge next tuesday this is your boy papa react and as always guys i will see you in the next one peace